Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to our Tuesday morning stream. And a continuation of our stylized uh, female face sculpting tutorial. So yesterday, if you missed the video, we started from a sphere, created what we have on screen in front of us now. There are actually a few more parts that I have hidden here. Let me turn those on really quick, just so we can see what else we have. We have a quick neck body and a quick um, hair piece up top. But uh, for the most part, what we focused on yesterday was actu actually just sculpting parts of the face. And uh, today we're gonna continue doing that. We wanted to make sure that we you know, got everything in there yesterday during our stream. And today we're gonna focus on taking this to the next level and pushing a lot closer to uh, a nice appealing face that uh, looks a little bit better than this. Right now, uh, we're, we're going in the right direction, but as we start to turn, a lot of this stuff in the profile isn't really reading the way I want it to. I think we do have some decent, uh, decent shapes going on here, but there are uh, quite a few things that I want to change to get us looking a little bit better. We can also look at doing some poly paint and some other stuff today. And then, uh, of course, I'm always around to answer any questions that we might have. Uh, I'll also mention that if you missed the stream yesterday and, and uh, you want to see this all the way from uh, from the beginning, if you uh, scroll on down to the bottom, there should be a link to my YouTube channel. It's just YouTube slash Polygon, and the uh, video will be up on there today. So you guys can check that out from the beginning. Let me close something real quick and also open up my chat. And we can go ahead and get started. Cool. Um, real quick. Just so, uh, for those that are new to what's going on and what we're kind of aiming for, here is a character uh, that I made for, I believe it was a witch character that we made. I think her name was Gravy, Gravy Nova or something like that. I let the people in Twitch chat name her. I let you guys name her. So, uh, <laughs> Gravy it was. Gravy it was. It was a good name. I enjoyed it. But just for an example, so that you guys can see kind of the stylized appeal that we're kind of aiming for, the face will be uh, a bit different in proportions, and uh, I want to make the the face less round. I want to make it more sharp down towards the chin. So there will be uh, some, you know, pretty uh, strong differences, but just um, for reference, so you guys can see kind of what we're aiming for. And I'll also be using this as a reference and pull up a few examples that we can show off on this gal throughout our lesson today. But with that said, I think we've given enough time for some people to jump in and join us. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, where, where did we leave off yesterday? I do remember that one of the last things that we were doing was working on the shape of the eye, uh, the eyelid, and I think we did uh, a few things to the nose. Obviously, there are some really sharp, planar changes in here in the face that we're gonna have to take care of. And we also want to merge our eyelids down into the head here today as well. Right now, these are, oh, we, uh, I think uh, eyelashes and eyebrows were the last thing that we did yesterday. Uh, so these are still low poly, which is not good. So I'm gonna add in a couple sub divs to these because once we merge those down, uh, the smooth, modifier that is on those will not apply. So we want that to be actual geo. How many sub divs do we have here? Let's see, seven. We'll just put them both at about seven. And it looks like there is a little bit of a gap down there. So let's make sure that we take care of that. I'm gonna be using my move brush to just kind of push and pull some points around. I think for pretty much the entire process yesterday, we used four brushes, maybe five. The clay tubes brush, trim dynamic, move brush, which almost really isn't really a brush. It's more of just like a tool to push and pull geometry around. We also used the pinch and the damn standard. So really about these four or five right here to do everything that we have on screen right now. Just a matter of knowing when to use which tool and um, yeah, just kind of being able to have control over your polygons on screen. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm, I'm just gonna toggle off the poly paint. It makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. Let's turn off our eyelashes as well. Where are our eyebrows? Let's do a quick little, <laughs> quick little organization here for our sub tool list. Uh, eyebrows, eyelashes, awesome. Our eyebrows could use quite a bit of work. 
Um, again, this character is something that I created using some references for some Disney characters just from Wreck-It Ralph 2. A few of those images I can pull up over here that I have off on my other monitor. Just a few screenshots from the film. Uh, and then I am also going to open up a reference that I was using yesterday because I really like the narrow chin that this character has and I want to aim for a similar face type. Uh, this is by Chadwick Dusenberry and then uh, Gus Soros did the base for this 3D model. I'm not sure who is responsible for what, but you should definitely check them both out and I will keep that over on my other monitor as we continue to do some work here today. So, I say we just do a kind of once over, just a quick pass on everything. Make sure that we clean up anything that's really sticking out to us. There's a lot of hard edges that I have kind of sculpted in here purposefully, but I think I'm gonna take some time to do a little bit of blending, mainly using the trim dynamic brush, as well as a little bit of smooth. You gotta be careful with that smooth brush though, because it's just so, so, so destructive. You gotta be, you gotta be careful with it. Let's go ahead and grab some move brush with AccuCurve, one of the additional tools that we looked at yesterday. And just looking at the silhouette, there's definitely a lot of changes that we want to make there. But let's just continue to at least hone in a little bit on this area for just a little bit longer. I'm thinking we could probably play with the silhouetted shape that I'm seeing here. Make sure that you're rotating around on your character quite often, looking at those extreme views often easy to forget to do that kind of thing. And then you end up sculpting on something for so long and it might look, you know, oh, this is the shape and silhouette that I want from the front. And then you turn over to the side and you're like, oh, wait, 3D is a thing. I totally forgot. So obviously that's an extreme example, but looking at the three quarter view for your silhouette, looking at that top down and bottom up kind of view so you can figure out how much wrap you're getting around your face. All this stuff is really, really important, and it's stuff that I try to uh, do as often as I can, make sure we're not getting too awkward from any one angle. We gotta make it look good from every angle, not just one. Unfortunately, we don't get the, the luxury that those dang 2D artists get, right? Those dang cheating 2D artists. They're the worst. Yeah. Now, I have uh, I have mad respect for, for 2D artists. I my brain just really isn't super great at um, at perspective on um, like in a 2D format. So I've never been really great at that and it's probably because I don't do it very often. Um, and that's kind of one of the reasons why I got into 3D. But at the same time, you know, I just love ZBrush. I love digital sculpting. Love me some 3D modeling. For a while I thought, you know, I wanted to get into 3D animation and I was really into that for a little while in school back when I was in college. And then I found out that, you know, animation was really hard. <laughs> and so I got into 3D modeling more and more and then high res digital sculpting. And uh, it turns out that that's really hard too. It just took me like a little bit longer to realize that. So I was already too deep. I was too much in the thick of it. I was um, on that upward slope of the Dunning-Kruger curve, right? <laughs> but that's all right. I uh, I love digital sculpting. And I have, I have since, since I first saw it. That's kind of why I got into it. Uh, one thing that I'm gonna do that we looked at yesterday was moving your light around. Your light source can be found up in your light menu and just by clicking and dragging on that little sphere, you can change where your light is hitting your object. I like to keep that top down light, but occasionally I'll put it uh, as a side light or straight on uh, if I'm having trouble seeing shadowed areas uh, under an object, kind of like what we have going on under the chin right now. So that's just something that I'm focusing on. I don't think I also mentioned uh, the shortcut that I have here set up for solo mode yesterday. Uh, I have talked, I think I did talk about solo mode yesterday very briefly. But if you do not already, I would recommend setting a shortcut for solo mode just so you can like toggle that on and off very quickly while you're working. It'll speed up your workflow uh, quite a bit. I enjoy using it all the time. Very helpful for just, you know, getting in here if you're trying to figure out where there's some mistake and you need to maybe get in on a specific area really quick. 
For me, it's the G key. I'll just hit that really quick and I can look at a specific piece of geometry very quickly. Try it out. I, uh, I think it'll speed up your workflow quite a bit. Another thing that is really bothering me about this face is the, um, the inner corner of the eye. Actually, kind of both corners of the eye. But I really want um, this inner corner to be quite a bit lower. I want this to be more of a, um, a drastic angle. I want this to be really pushed. And we can kind of experiment with that to figure out how far we can push that before it starts to break. And then maybe push that back a little bit more after the fact. Let's also use our mask lasso brush, which we have been using all the time. If you hold the control key, you can come up here and click and select a variety of different mask brushes. The mask lasso is my favorite to use. I also like the default mask pen. Mask lasso is great for just doing some quick little block out areas. And then you can come back through with your mask pen to make a little bit of a more, um, a little bit more precise selection. But it's great for just doing quick stuff. Uh, other than that, I think this curve here, this, let me turn off the perspective. This angle, I'm not really liking. I want to get that to be a little bit more flat so that once we blend that together, that has a nice little uh, silhouette read here. If we're looking at um, coming down from that eyelid wrapping around the cheek, we typically want to see a relatively straight line down, wrap around the mouth and out the chin. So there are a few things here that we can to do to get a little bit closer to that. Francisco, welcome back. How are you doing, brother? How is your Tuesday going? Oh, by the way, it is two stream Tuesday, so I will also be streaming on the Pixelogic ZBrush channel tonight at 6 p.m. EST. So if you guys are around, come hang out. We will be working on something completely different than what we are doing I have a few ideas of what we've got. I actually have one idea that I really, really like uh, that I think we will probably end up doing, but if there is anything specific that anybody would like to see during that time or even today, shout it out in the chat and we can maybe take a look depending on how much time it will take. All right, so that is the shape that I am looking for. Now we just wanna play with correcting some of the uh, thickness issues that we have going on. Play a little bit with thick to thin and also play around with just the shape of the cheek and face and everything right around that area. This is always a very tough area to work on. Let's move our light back up. This is always a very tough area like all through here just because it has so many things interacting with it. It's got the lips, it's got the nose, it's got the eye socket, the brow and everything else kind of interacting even flowing up to the jawline. I mean, all this stuff is just kind of coalescing, coalesce, coalescing, coalescing, sure. Right here, and it ends up um, just being a tough area to get a really nice shape. And studying anatomy and all this stuff is, you know, very helpful for working on stylized characters. And a lot of people ask questions about anatomy. It will definitely help you when working on stuff like this, just kind of understanding form and being able to create different shapes and understanding what's going on under the surface, all this stuff is definitely helpful. But at the same time, you know, anatomy is just a tool to help you out. It's not something that's extremely necessary. If you're sculpting for anatomical accuracy, then, you know, it's definitely something that you want. Um, but when you're working on stylized characters, it's not like a, um, a hard rule or a must have. It will definitely help you though. So for figuring out stuff that's going on here in the face, there are specific shapes that I want to aim for that probably aren't super accurate to anatomy. But at the same time, just kind of understanding the form and what's going on under the surface, again, very, very helpful to, uh, to understand that kind of stuff. Outside Lane is raiding with a party of 12. Welcome to the stream, Outside Lane and everybody else. We just hopped on and we are getting back to working on a face that we started yesterday. So welcome guys. Uh, if you've never been here before, I am Folygon and we started just yesterday on this doing a kind of step-by-step -step guide, me explaining as much as I could going through the process of creating a stylized 
uh, female face, more feminine face. So we're going slow, we're taking our time trying to explain as many tools and brushes, etc., as we possibly can. So if you guys have any questions or anything, shout it out in the chat. <laughs> Raid, what? <laughs> what is this jiggly puff emote? Where does everybody get all these awesome emotes? I need to, I need to invest in my emote library because I am severely lacking in cool emotes. Uh, finally caught you on stream. Always like to see some male face sculpting, but there's already a lot of videos. I can get some research materials. So, uh, yeah, actually, um, I have a free. Uh, where the hell is my browser? There it is. Uh, there is a free 3D model on my Gumroad that's linked down below that actually has a video associated with it. Hey, what's going on, it? guys? I'm following. Shut up. Shut up, me. Uh, that has a video associated with it that you can check out uh, that goes through the process. Uh, it's just, you know, like a 10 minute video uh, and me talking about the different tools and brushes that I use. It's sped up, you know, it's a time lapse that I just recorded in ZBrush. But it goes through the uh, the whole thing, kind of talking about proportions and stuff that you want to look for. Uh, but yeah, that might be something that you want to check out since you said you were uh, looking for some male face stuff. But yeah, he was a lot of fun to work on. Again, the model is free on my Gumroad, which is linked down below. But yeah, I think I do uh, just the face, a little bit of the body, and I think I do some like really quick hair. But I believe that's all. Oh, I also poly paint it really quick. But yeah, check it out. Maybe that's something that would be interesting for you. It's at the very bottom of the Gumroad page. Uh, especially stylized characters need some guidance sometimes. Absolutely. Stylized characters are no laughing matter. They're tough. They're very tough. Which is why uh, the majority of our stream today, now that we have all the parts and pieces in there from yesterday and we've We've talked a little bit about that. Today we're gonna to be pushing this more towards appeal. And I'll try to cover as much as I can on that. We can talk about fundamentals, if anybody has any questions about fundamentals or what kind of shapes we're looking for or how do we produce clean shapes, etc., etc. We can look at all that stuff. I think what I wanna do first, or next, I guess. We've already done a few things first, haven't we? So I guess next, I wanna play with these lips a little bit. There are some depth issues here and also width issues um, going on. So let's, um, let's play with that a little bit. It looks like my little cylinder that I put in the mouth is poking through my lower lip. So that's a no-no. I'm gonna put a little angle on this for my teeth, my little cylinder tooth. I like to just put that in there to figure out the shape and roundness that I'm trying to achieve in the lip area. I find it to be pretty helpful, but um, you know, it's definitely not necessary. Select this poly group, please. Jeez. Uh, but yeah, let's get in here on this lower lip first. And just try to work on how this is transitioning felt really sharp and really narrow, like back through here. So I think a little bit of some cleanup and then just fixing this kind of concavity here. It doesn't really feel too great. So let's come through with uh, just our move brush, start nudging some stuff around. I mean, that's mainly what I use for pretty much everything. Just a, a big move brush and I, whoops, we want the pinch brush, please. And then just like tighten up this edge. You'd be surprised by uh, how much you can do with just like a couple brushes. Or maybe you're not, maybe you're not, maybe you already know. But really, for the most part, I only use about like four or five brushes. That's a little, that's a little terrifying. That's always fun to look at. <laughs> uh, for this lower lip, I think, um, I think I want to get rid of the hard hit that I have there and just kind of round out this shape a little bit more. Just get a nice kind of swoop through there and grab our secondary pinch brush, the MAH Cut, which is available on the Pixo site. And just kind of come through here and work on this transition a little bit. Up through the um, 
kind of top to the corner of the lip there. We want to fade that in with our trim, a little bit of smooth, have that not be quite such a feature. And then as it comes down and wraps around, we can maybe play with the shape down there a little bit. I think I'm just going to keep that um, pretty rounded. And then for this kind of tight edge here, I have that blocked out pretty tight uh, currently. So instead what I'll do, let's look at the silhouette here real quick. I'm just going to soften that shape a little bit. And then in terms of the pillows of the lower lip, I think we'll just keep the lips relatively simple down here. Let's just try to get something nice and clean. So a little bit of softening of this shape. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention yesterday with your smooth brush, uh, I have talked about this on stream before, but I don't think I mentioned it yesterday. Uh, if you are using your smooth brush, a really cool kind of hidden function with the smooth brush. Um, let me get some quick little garbage on here. So of course you hold the shift key to smooth out geometry. It's the smooth brush, everybody knows that. But if you hold the shift key and smooth out your geo and then let go of the shift key while you're still uh, brushing, it will do an alternative smoothing algorithm. And it's a little bit different. There are some better examples that we can maybe look at for how it's different. Uh, one good example, I think, let's see. Turn on AccuCurve. Let's get a real sharp pull out here. So if you smooth, or actually let's drop down even lower here. So the normal smooth brush tends to be pretty destructive. And um, it, if you wanna get some you know, subtle results with it, you either have to brush very lightly or turn down your Z intensity quite a bit. Alternatively, you can again start smoothing and then let go of your um, shift key and instead of doing the normal smoothing algorithm, it will kind of do a little bit of an averaging of the topology that's happening on your surface. This isn't uh, you know, the best example in the world, but it does act a little bit differently. I think the best way for you to probably figure out how it works is to try it out in your own work. And um, typically around areas that have hard or sharp edges, uh, I like to use that alternative smooth a little bit more than the uh, normal smooth function just because it helps to relax that surface whereas smooth will come through and be a little bit more destructive than what I want. But try it out yourself. Again, it's shift to smooth, then let go of the shift key. Look, mom, one hand, you know. Try it out and let me know how it works for you. But I use that pretty much all the time. I'm just, you know, depending on the situation, al alternating between the two smooth brushes. I was just using it right there. I kind of do it without thinking about it anymore. But I remember when I discovered that it helped me out a lot in uh, some of the stuff that I was trying to do. Helps you create some more clean forms. You know what, I think, um, I think our chin is gonna get a little bit smaller here as well as a little bit more uh, narrow. So let's focus on kind of pulling up here. Get a little bit of a smaller chin and possibly play with the angle of our jaw because it's feeling quite flat right now. Let's just um, run a mask up through there. Probably be the easiest way to do this. And we'll just kind of play with the angle of the jaw there a little bit. Try to get that looking a little bit better. Take a look at our face from the front again. As we make any changes, we definitely want to be rotating around, changing our light source, seeing how things are shaping up. And we're probably at a point, or at least pretty close to a point, where I would want to merge in some of these other parts like the ears and lids, neck. Our neck's just kind of a crappy cylinder that we haven't done anything with. Can add a couple subdivs to this, I guess, real fast. Uh, typically, in these style of characters, you'll see a lot um, of a, a more thin neck, and it can often look a little awkward. Um, but once you get hair and everything else on there, it starts to feel a little bit better. For example, based on how thin the neck is here, but you know, once you start 
blending that and tapering some of the shapes, it'll start to feel a little bit better. I think it still feels a little bit awkward from some angles, but like I said, once you get the hair and everything, yeah, I, I don't think you'll even notice. All right, a little bit more change here. And let's see, let's grab our face here and just look at this jaw angle that we got going on. I think that's pretty similar now. I think I might want to push that up a little bit more and then <clears throat> play with just the, the silhouette here for our face. As well as our dome. Especially if you're going for like a more kind of anime style. Man, the heads on those characters are, are huge. And the faces are often quite tiny, comparatively. Uh, there's actually a default. If you go up into your light box, I believe under Z Tools? No, it must be under Projects then. Projects. There is a demo anime head that you can check out and play around with to kind of get an idea of that stylized appeal for a more anime style character. But yeah, check it out, play around with it. Use it as a base, use it for your own stuff. It's in ZBrush, so go ham. You bought the software, you're allowed to use whatever you want in it. I think I'm gonna move these eyes a little bit closer together and just kind of play with their, um, their shape and proportion all together, as well as just kind of everything here. Uh, one trick that we can do, oops, to make working on our eyelids in transpose a little bit easier. First, I'm going to merge my eyelids together. And because they both have the same number of subdivision levels, shouldn't cause any problems. And then I'm going to step down to the third, or let's say the second lowest subdiv, and I'm gonna click on delete lower in my geometry palette. And then when I go into transpose master, which is up in your Z plugin transpose master menu. Uh, we'll have a little bit more resolution there to uh, be able to work with this. So just from the front view alone, I think it's a little hard to tell without the smooth on some of these shapes. So let's go ahead and just play with our eye shape for a little bit here. Use my select rectangle brush. Do a quick mask and invert. Slide in there, and then possibly, I wanna see how much kind of additional angle I can get out of these. Turn on local sim. If you don't turn on local sim when doing a scale operation, it will scale from the central um, mirrored axis, which is the X axis in this case. So I'll turn that on, and then it will scale in locally on itself. And then we can turn on local sim back on and do some more finagling. And then to do quick masking like what I just did, I don't know if I've mentioned this yesterday or not, but activate your transpose tool or your 3D gizmo, one or the other, doesn't matter, and just control click on any geometry that you would like to work on. It'll mask off everything else and um, unmask what you control clicked on. All right, we're gonna go a little bit more, I think, narrow here. Let's turn off perspective and just try to um, get like a little tug in here on the sides. And then let's take a look at our three quarter angle. And I think the uh, kind of lower portion of the face, I would like to wrap this out quite a bit or rotate it out quite a bit, if I can. The angle here of some of this is just feeling a little bit too um, slanted back. So I'll try to do some of that, but we also wanna pay special attention to our cheek area and make sure we're not getting too crazy around there. And 
And let's see, what else do we want to focus on while we are here in Transpose Master? Probably just the general uh, shape of some of the proportions of our head. If I can, I think the easiest way to do some of this would just be with a quick mask and a quick slide forward. Let's see here. A little bit there. And then of course we need to adjust the rest of our head to make some of that feel not so squashed back there. Typically when I'm on the orthographic view, like side, front, top, bottom, whatever, I'll turn off perspective just so I get a little bit more kind of clear look at my silhouette and I can kind of obsess over the shape a little bit easier. Uh, but if you do have perspective on, just be aware that if you're masking off something or trying to mask off like a specific shape or sculpt something, uh, and if that projects over to the other side, much like the mask brushes uh, do with the mask lasso, it will not be um, perfectly symmetrical. It will like skew it off to one side. So I tend to keep that off while working here on this kind of side view type stuff. And let's see. I think I would like to get a little bit more depth in my eye region here. Uh, and just the area around the cheek here. So what I'm going to do is mask off everything on the face, except for the ear and neck, and then try just doing a general kind of mask around this area. Again, that goes through to the other side. Mask that. Ooh, and then we did mask that incorrectly. So I'll just show everything, control tap, invert that mask selection, and we should be able to just slide these back. Try to get a little bit more depth here. I'm gonna keep pushing those. Go back to the face for a little bit. And I'm just kind of tapping with my smooth brush a little bit, trying to be very careful with just kind of rounding that shape back into place. And we can focus on doing some more changes to get a little bit more volume out of the lower portion of our jaw, just so we're, we're getting a nice kind of rounded wrap there up through the face. I like to try to focus on the line coming up from the corner of the mouth all the way wrapping around the cheek and up the head a little bit. If we look at this character, I believe I pointed this out yesterday, but just kind of focusing on where that hit's taking place and you can maybe focus that line a little bit more on the cheekbone. Uh, but I like to have, you know, a lot of these kind of internal silhouette lines that I focus on. That's just some of the areas that we will try to get a little bit more um, volume and wrap all the way through. So let's just see what this is looking like after we get out of Transpose. Cascade all those changes back and continue forward. Labasi, welcome back. How you doing? Hello, hello. Uh, and then some areas here, there's obviously, you know, once we go to blend these lids in, I think it'll be a little bit of a better shape around kind of this area here, if I can select that. But I think we could probably stand to just fill some of this in now, just to get this headed in the correct direction. Or you know what, right here, I'll, I'll leave that alone. I might be able to might be a little beneficial to us. I'm gonna try to open that up just a tad more. Ooh, we got some poly paint on there. And this is actually what I was trying to accomplish earlier by moving that corner down. I was trying to get a little bit more of a square shape to the lid. Not really a square, but I wanted to hit on the upper lid where that line is passing through and on the lower lid where uh, that line is passing through. So that's typically what you'll see in, um, you know, human eyes, real human eyes, but obviously quite exaggerated here as we push more and more towards some appealing shapes.
And up through here, through the brow region, we could probably stand to get some more volume. And there's just like an awkward, I don't know if you guys saw that, but there's like a weird pinch going on there in the surface. So if we can fill that in and just get rid of that, that would be awesome. And then as for the line of the brow, if I can, try to get that to flow all the way through. And you don't, you know, this isn't something super exact that we always want to aim for. To Tommy K, huh? <laughs> nice name. Sounds like a, a video game where you fight on tatami mats. But welcome to the stream and thank you for the follow. Tatami Chaos. Uh, so these internal silhouette lines that I've been mentioning, you know, they're things that you definitely want to look for and try to achieve if you can, because I always kind of keep an eye out for them and I um, I think they add a lot to, to your characters. Uh, but it's not always possible. And, you know, trying to force something like this isn't you know, something you always want to try to do. But it does help me in just kind of blocking out certain areas of my face. Obviously much too tight, we'd want to soften that up. But at least initially to um, pinch some of that shape and figure out where I want that um, surface to start breaking and turning is never a bad idea. Uh, nose is not looking super, super cute or anything. So there's definitely some work that we got to do there. Uh, in terms of the shape, let's see. Let me just play with that for a little bit. And I feel like um, I was just kind of dipping in a little bit too fast for my for my liking. So I think um, I'll just do a little tweak here and there. Typically when I'm sculpting a nose, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Ninja Turtle mask trick. I don't know if there will be... Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. So a nose uh, very often looks like a kind of Ninja Turtle mask or face. I'm trying to find a good example. So this is kind of what I somewhat visualize when I'm sculpting my, my noses. Maybe not to that extent, but I don't really see another good example. Uh, in this fate, this nose is kind of um, kind of sharp and pointed and small for something like that. But when sculpting more realistic noses, that's kind of something that I look for in my noses. <laughs> I know it's a little goofy, but it, it does help to kind of visualize that for me. Art secrets. It's been a long time since I've heard that little trick. I feel like I heard it from... Mark Brené, like many, many years ago. Happy New Year to you as well, Labasi, as well as everybody else. Hope everybody had a great, great New Year's Eve, New Year party, shindig, etc. Sounds like a neat name for a game, I agree. <laughs> you just happen to like tatami, tatami mats. That's pretty cool. I wish I had one. Are, are yoga mats made out of the same material that tatami mats are made out of? And is the material called tatami? I'm gonna guess no, right? What is, what exactly is tatami? These are the questions that keep me up at night. Uh, seen a lot of your work on Twitter. I'm glad I could actually catch a stream. Love the way you shape your characters. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's very nice of you. Glad you could come hang out for once. Trying to focus on getting closer to appeal now in a face that we sculpted yesterday. And we are headed in the correct direction, but, you know, this kind of stuff takes time. And one thing that I'm starting to see right now is how um, blocky our forehead and actually just our head in general is looking here like it feels very very squarey very squarey it's a thing that people say right so let's adjust that if we can and then just start looking at this top view this is why it's so important to look at those extreme views because really sometimes you just can't notice stuff from certain angles 
and then you spend forever trying to figure out what's wrong with your sculpt and all you had to do was rotate it a few degrees up and you would have immediately seen it. Uh, I also want to merge this neck in because a lot of these shapes down here are really bothering me. Uh, so that's something we will do very soon. But yes, we must obsess over our shapes. That's how I create such clean stuff. You gotta be a little crazy, I feel, to do some of this kind of work. <laughs> a little obsessive or OCD. I'm not really OCD at all, but when it comes to my clean sculpts, I guess in a way I am. light to the bottom just so I can see this jawline a little bit easier. This will blend into the neck and then we'll get some nice wrap down there later. But when I'm sculpting I try not to get distracted by any, you know, like there's still some problems in the silhouette and the face and everything else that I want to fix, but I try to just like really hone in on one area here and not get too distracted by everything else that's going on. It's really important. Ooh, always get that lazy mouse error where it like pulls a stroke across your mesh. That's always super annoying. Pixel logic, fix that one. What's what really sucks is when it does that like right right before a crash, and you come back to your sculpt and you have like this huge line through it. <laughs> That's always terrible. It, this doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's like a slap in the face. Uh made of rice straw or something like that. Rice straw? I guess rice is on a stalk of some kind. I guess I, yeah, I've seen rice fields before. I guess I never really thought about it. I guess there is straw from a rice stalk slash plant. Uh, thank you for recommending Hoon Soon Sang. Found a neat character I want to build. Absolutely, man. Uh, yeah, for everybody else, check out Hoon Soon Sang on, uh, on ArtStation, they got a ton of really, really nice work. Uh, and they've recently, uh, I saw that they cleaned up their ArtStation. Uh, so if you are looking for more of their work, they also have an Instagram account with uh, a bunch more stuff on it. You should check out. Uh, Daggett Underline, thank you for the follow, man. Appreciate it. Uh, they use rice for a lot of things in Japan. They're very inventive with it. Yes, much like the buffalo, right? and the, the Native Americans. You gotta use every part of it. Every part of the rice. Human ingenuity knows no bounds. Or like um, sheep and goats, like using their intestines and ugh, all sorts of grody stuff that I don't want to think about. <laughs> Sculpt and not build. Yeah, uh, end up with that lazy mouse issue in Photoshop sometimes. Uh, does Photoshop by default have a lazy mouse feature that I don't know about? I know there's like a, there's a tool called Lazy Nizumi, I think, that is essentially like a lazy mouse outside of ZBrush. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. I believe it's Nizumi, Lazy Nizumi. Uh, but I, don't, I didn't know Photoshop had that by default. Maybe it does. If it does, point it out. I don't really need something like that in Photoshop. I don't really do a lot of too much 2D work. Most of what I do in Photoshop anymore is just like compositing renders and compositing layer stacks, etc. These following alerts are great. What are the following alerts? I'm not sure actually what you're talking about. <laughs> it's possible that's what caused it. 
the uh, lazy mouse issue. Oh, you've used lazy. Yeah, that's a, that was my guess. You've used uh, lazy Nizumi for so long, you forgot that you had it. You forgot that that wasn't just like a thing in the software. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah, I often forget all sorts of, you know, things that I take for granted in uh, in ZBrush here. I'll often, I don't know if you guys do this, but you get like so used to doing a certain hotkey in one piece of software, and then you hop over to like something else. Like I'll go into Photoshop and I'll hit like my pop-up menu hotkey, and I'll be like, what the hell, Photoshop? Why are you not working? I'm like, ah, oh, it's because I'm an idiot. That's why. That's why you don't want to work. But yeah, I do that kind of stuff all the time too. It's funny. All right, let's focus in here on combining some parts and pieces of our geometry. Uh, but before we merge down our ears, neck, and eyelids, a th very important thing that we need to do that we worked very hard to retain was our um, lips and the separation between those lips. If I were to dynamesh this right now, because these are touching in here, we would end up with all of that geometry merging together. Oh no, that's not what we want. We don't want that all kind of stuck together in there. We wanna make sure that we can open up the lips and close them as we, uh, as we wish. So uh, we will be opening the mouth back up just for a little bit and then we can close it back up after we merge everything back down. There's also a really tight edge in here. I'm not sure at what part of the process that happened, but we wanna smooth that out just a little bit. Getting a really hard edge transition in there that I don't like. And then, and then, for the two people in the chat that understand that reference. And then, and then, and then, and then. All right, let's open that mouth up. Give a quick mask here. Whoa, not what I wanted. And I'm just gonna use a move brush here and get those corners nice and wide. And then we will merge down our ears and our lower eyelids first and then our upper eyelids. Oh, the uh, My Hero Academia GIF, yes. <laughs> yes, I love that as well. I thought you meant like the alert when I went live or something like that. I was like, I don't think it says anything special. I think it just says, Folygon is live. <laughs> Yes, I was very creative with that one. Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> I love me some My Hero. Who doesn't? Who doesn't love My Hero? Anime snobs, that's who. People you can't trust, that's who. People with no taste. What, what else can we say that's bad about people that don't like My Hero Academia? It's one of my favorite animes currently, but obviously a lot of people think the same because it's very popular. All right, let's tighten in this shape. Maybe go for a bit smaller of an ear. Feels a little um, thick as well, so maybe a little bit of thinning out. And then I wanna make sure that this is all kind of touching here so that it can merge properly. This is a very simple shape for an ear. We can modify this as much as we want. This was actually a brush. This is, I believe the ear brush is on, just in my Folygon brushes. Yes, the insert ear brush is on my gum road. There's a link down below under just my base Folygon brushes. Uh, it has a stylized ear as well as a more realistic ear, which we can see very quickly. Insert ear. So if you want more of a realistic ear as well, and you want a really good base to work off of, I recommend checking that out. 
I, uh, I got really tired of sculpting ears one day and I was like, screw it, I'm just gonna make a brush for this so that I don't have to do it uh, quite as often anymore. But still, you know, once you insert something from a base, you still wanna take the time to modify it and change it, clean it up. Ooh, we lost our subdivs. There we go. <laughs> Always try to orbit in Photoshop. That's so funny. So you try to rotate around in 3D in Photoshop. That's awesome. I uh, I have also done this. It's been a long time since I've done that specifically, but I have done that before. You do it like once, and then you do it like one more time, and you're like, <sighs> you just take a deep sigh and <laughs> try to figure out what's wrong with your brain. Uh, definitely deserving of the popularity. Heck yeah. Awesome character design, for sure. Uh, Dean says, how can I dock these sculpting brushes at the bottom shelf? I'm trying to figure it out. The customization is already enabled. Uh, yeah, so I guess, let's see. So you've already come up here to config under re preferences and turned on enable customize. All you have to do is grab your brush menu uh, it's easier if you dock it over on one side temporarily. Uh, find whatever brush you want. Let's say we want the planar brush. And then hold Control and Alt, click and drag that, and then you can put it wherever you want. I'll put it right here. Sure. There's my new planar brush location. Or I can click and drag and, oops, <laughs> put it up here somewhere. Like, there's, there. There, you can even overlay stuff on top of each other. That's how, that's how nice ZBrush is. You can do whatever you want. I can't, I can't grab it to get rid of it now. <laughs> Here, uh, let's see, restore custom UI. There we go, goodbye. But yeah, control and alt, click and drag, whatever icon, button, special object you want. Um, you're a lifesaver, no problem, man. Quick and easy one. Alright, we got some kind of terrible surface going on through here. I just want to make sure that while I have these subdivs and we're about to merge a bunch of stuff together, so it's like, hey, it's a good time to fix some of those stuff that, some of the things that we can do at lower subdivs a lot easier than what we can do later. Move back face masking up here, just a tad. And yeah, it's looking pretty good, looking better. We'll work on that transition for the corner there in a little bit too. Whoa, oh my goodness, oh my. To Tommy Chaos, hey, awesome, thank you man. Thank you for the subscription there, I appreciate that a lot. I cannot select me eyelid. But thank you, that means a lot to me. I appreciate that, dude. And welcome Kyber Chris. Kyber Chris, I did not read your name earlier. <laughs> what is what is Kyber Chris? Please explain this to me. Was Cyber Chris taken? What's up? What's going on here? You just going against the grain? All right, let's check our eyelid order here. We got front lid, bottom lid, oh that inner corner. That's so close. Let's uh let's focus on this bottom lid for a minute because ugh, that's that's no bueno. Hmm. Might need to shift this eye out a little bit. And maybe it'll be fine once we 
once we take the time to blend these shapes together. It definitely won't be, we won't have this like sharp transition there, that's for sure. That inner corner just feels a little shallow to me. Maybe we can just kind of find an in-between here. Overlord Nader, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it, man. Welcome to the stream. Uh, no problem. Be sure to keep my eye on when the stream will, will be about. Will be about. Will be about. I'm also going to be streaming on the Pixo channel tonight at 6 EST. So that's only in five hours, five hours from now. That'll be a lot of fun. This uh, this eye shape's starting to really come together, minus this um this like corner here, which is totally fine. That's that's really easy to fix once we get into it. Uh, the other thing that needs to happen here, other than like fixing this corner, is uh, making sure that. I kind of fill in some of the area back here. Once this merges together, it's a little frustrating to manipulate some of that geometry in there. So I like to do this, at least the past couple times I've done this, uh, I like to get in here and fill this in. Let's really focus in on um, that eyelid angle as well which isn't feeling quite flat enough. We want that to be, we essentially want this plane here, this one, to be pointing at the center of your eyeball. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but, you know, as good as you can get it. And what that ends up doing for us, to explain the science behind it, of why it looks good, is because it ends up creating a nice shadow for you on the top eyelid. Helps the whole thing read pretty well. It's also how your eyelid works in real life. You know, that plane there tends to point towards the center of your eyeball. Uh, on the bottom lid, it also gives you a nice highlight on that bottom portion. Uh, just ends up working out pretty well to, um, to really focus on that stuff. Uh, the other thing I was thinking about doing was um, making sure these corners line up a little bit better because that overlap tends to cause quite a few issues down the road that I don't like to deal with too much. Might as well fix it now before we, you know, we should create solutions for ourselves. Work smarter, not harder, right? Uh, what will I be doing on the Pixelogic stream? So I'm taking suggestions, but I thought a cool idea, r slash uh, sh shower thoughts that I had the other day, would be to um, <laughs> go back and critique some of my, my own personal older work from kind of when I was really getting into the beginning of sculpting and look at what I would do today now to like change some of the stuff that I did uh, earlier. So if that sounds cool and interesting, we can do that. Or if anybody else, like like I said, I'm always open to suggestions or looking at you know specifics so we can maybe do something else as well. But I thought that would be pretty fun and a cool idea. Eh, that's probably good enough. Get this one over here too. Ooh, that's also something we want to avoid. We don't want this surface to be super convex or concave. I want this plane to be pretty flat here. As long as those corners are pretty close, this should be fine. Because the rest of this is just going to blend in to the head there and it won't even be seen, so it won't matter. Uh, 
uh, the first person to ask. <laughs> you, uh, you love Star Wars, so it's kind of a play on uh, Kyber Crystal. Ah, I gotcha. I, I gotcha. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Just kind of rang in your head. Nice. That's funny. I thought it was just a clever misspelling of cyber. All right. I think uh, that's good for the corners. The other thing, like I said, is just making sure that we're kind of filling in this hard edge just because it gets annoying to deal with. This does not have to be anything special. It can be dirty. It doesn't have to be, you know, hyper clean or anything. Mr. Clean, even though I am. I feel like I should shave my head and start calling myself Mr. Clean ZBrush Edition or something. <laughs> Focus on all of them clean shapes. Uh, and I, again, I'm using back face masking here, so it prevents that outer edge from moving with the move brush. It's all just kind of focused on that one direction that I'm pushing the stroke. All right, uh, again, ears probably good to merge down now. I just want to make sure that there's enough room up top there for that to merge in. Very simple shape for the ears, nothing too fancy. And the neck, I think I'll just merge that where it lies and work on blending some of the shapes around it. Yeah, we'll just kind of leave that for now. All right, uh, so let's see. Oh boy, got lots of junk here that we forgot about. So we got our head. We're gonna merge down these lids. We're gonna merge down our ears and our neck as well. Let's just merge down, push that up, grab our head, lids, awesome. Okay, so merge down, merge down, and there we go. So we got all this geometry in one subtool now. You could merge these with live boolean. Oh wow, the shape of the head is not looking great in the back, is it? Really quick, we'll just reconstruct a couple subdivs and fix that. Look at that, that is not what we want at all. Um, this is why it's important to look at your three quarter angles and everything else. Uh, but we wanna fix this stuff now before we merge it all together. Just a little bit easier on us. And once we blend in the neck there, that'll start shaping up a lot better. All right. So you could use live boolean. I'm just gonna use Dynamesh, it's just faster. And I don't have to worry about too much here. 700 res, let's go higher. Let's go like 1K. 1.7 mil in the poly count. That looks pretty clean to me. I think that will be what we professionals call good enough. <laughs> All right, and now we'll kind of sculpt on some of this just a little bit in the Dynamesh stage, and then uh, we'll remesh here in just a moment. Clean sculpts, uh, the clean sculpts are so satisfying, I agree. Love me some clean work. Need to start doing eyelids separately like that. I keep doing them with the clay buildup on the base head, which I find ends up being really hard to manage later on. Uh, that's, yeah, that's specifically why I do it this way, just because it's easier to work with, easier to manage. Um, I did a bunch of, whoa, slow down there, or speed up please, you're going really slow. I did a bunch of, um, over on my art station, you can see a few of these. I did a bunch of like style studies off of a few different artists. And I believe for all three of these, the time, or not time lapses, but the videos of me working on these, the whole thing are on my YouTube channel if you wanna check it out. But I believe all the eyes here were sculpted with that exact process. All the eyelids were just done by um, Dynameshing and you know actually just sculpting it in with a clay tubes brush. I prefer the clay tubes over the clay buildup just because the clay buildup is harder for me to control because it like 
endlessly builds up and you can get a, a really large form out of that quicker uh, than I personally like to have. But yeah, I believe all of these were, were made with that same strategy. This one was my favorite out of those quick style studies. It was the first one that I did. I, was, I thought I had a fourth one. That was something different. But yeah, those were fun to work on. And I do, I do like that strategy as well. If I'm trying to be a little bit more precise, and I think this is, you know, for people that are, you know, checking out this video later, looking for some tutorials for sculpting these style of heads, I really do think that this is the better way to do it, uh, simply for the fact that it's cleaner, it gives you more control, but if you're comfortable doing it that way, by all means, you know, go crazy. Go crazy. But I think for people that are newer, it might be, you know, a little bit nicer to see a different strategy as well as um, something that gives you a little bit more control. Uh, I love the clay brush. I, there's a bunch of different clay brushes that are really nice in here. I, uh, I have my own version of the clay tubes brush. It uses uh, a few different functions um, in the brush mods and then I keep a really short, lazy mouse stroke on it. Uh, but yeah, there's a few different mods that I've done to this brush, but it just gives like a really nice, clean, concise stroke. And even if you stroke really fast, it always stays consistent. Like it's one solid brush stroke. Whereas with um, the normal clay tubes brush, which I might've, removed it. Here it is. So with the normal clay tubes brush, you can see um, the, in yeah, this is the clay tubes. Yep. You can see the interaction and how that differs. So a lot kind of harder ridge. Um, if you go a little bit too fast with your stroke, you end up getting the stair stepping, which I'm not a huge fan of, but yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit nicer, right? I like it a lot. You can get this brush for, and all my other brushes, for five doll hairs over on my camera road. Hashtag ad, or whatever people on the internet say. Oh my gosh, our eyebrows and eyelashes we completely forgot about, and now they are just floating off in space. That looks beautiful. <laughs> uh, let me turn those off, and we can reapply those after a little bit more work on our head. So we've now uh, combined our neck, our ears, our eyelids. We got our mouth open back up so that we can remesh this. I like to come through on my neck uh, connection and hit it with the alt stroke of the trim dynamic brush. It um, tends to like fill in little gaps, little gap areas like this. And I'll just kind of do it around this entire area. And while you're doing that, you'll see like some artifacts start to appear there probably just because it's like this really tight area where that was dynameshed together. So you can just re-dynamesh, smooth it back out and keep blending away. It's easier to blend once you have some subdivs and some lower res uh, topology that you can step through. But for this stage, it's totally fine. Just keep, you know, nice and quick and it's okay if it's a little bit messy, it's not gonna hurt anything. Very easy to clean up later on. All right, and then where did our eyebrows go? We should fix our eyebrows and place these back on our head. I also wanna play with the shape of our eyebrows. We literally just kind of put these in and forgot about them. <laughs> I had them off for so long. We can probably look at cleaning that up as well. Uh, I'll, I'll check those videos out. Awesome, man. Yeah, for sure. Clay tubes brush is very tempting. It's a good brush. That's why I use it. <laughs> I'm sure uh, with your own fiddling, you could probably create something very similar. I often recommend people to create their own brushes and experiment and play around with their own stuff. In general, I recommend that people make their own stuff, but you know, if you want, I'm, I'm not gonna complain if you guys wanna grab my stuff. I always uh, appreciate 
Appreciate the downloads. Just a little bit of soft, uh, a little bit of very like gentle, gentle smooth through here, very light. And we have a ton of poly groups here that we want to, some of them we want to utilize. But I think instead of doing that, we'll just control W and redo our poly groups. Because most of these that we want to keep are pretty much just around the corners of the mouth and the corners of the eye. We could set up our topology for this face now, um, but I typically don't like to do that on stream just because it's something that often takes quite a while and it's you know, each face is different and it requires some, uh, uh, what would you call it, experimentation. And just for the time investment alone, it's not something that I like to do here on stream. We can maybe look at a little bit of it though. Maybe do a Spark Notes version. Uh, that stepping is something that you've never liked on the standard clay tubes brush. Yes, I agree. But unfortunately, it's in it's in a lot of brushes, even the clay build-up brush here. And I still get that stair stepping, which I'm not a huge fan of either. I like to get those nice clean strokes, like I said. What was that? It looks super laggy there. Let's just uh, trim up through here and fill in some of this information because it like dips in really strong and I'm not digging that. So we're gonna dig it out or I guess fill it up, dig it in, throw some dirt in there, fill that crevasse. Yeah, this will probably just be easier to do once we remesh. So we'll do that now. All right, uh, and then re very quickly, let me just uh, readjust our eyelashes here that we made as a copy from our eyelids, which uh, this video is up on my YouTube channel. It might not be up right this minute, but it will be up today after I'm done streaming for the first part. You guys wanna see how to make these. Or literally anything on this head that we started from a sphere. You know, start from scratch. That's the whole point. Almost everything I do on my streams is started from scratch. CRG, what's going on, man? Welcome to the stream. Currently learning the basics and the anatomy that's the best start. I think, and later want to do some custom brushes. Awesome, man. Sounds like fun. All right, let's pull in around some of this, just to make sure that that is overlapping properly. I don't really like the, um, the shape that I'm seeing here. So what I'm going to do is take this outer edge Start to get a little bit more of a loop through here. So that that point or that face, this purple plane there that's facing us, I want that to kind of taper out as it goes out there, which now we are starting to achieve. So that is pretty nice. Starting to look better, get some nicer shapes through here. This is just you know way too extreme. And we will continue to play with that shape as we do some more stuff here to our face. Hmm. All right, let's remesh our face and then we'll be able to do a lot of things to start adjusting some of the forms here, especially around like this hard 
transition. All these little areas that add up and create these hard edges that we don't want or hard transitional shapes. And this is right where that eyelid merged down into our face. So it's got like this tight area in there that I'm trying to fill in. It's just a lot easier to do this when you got something low res. But at least just to start getting that heading in the right direction, everything's just too high res right now. So let's do it. Remesh a Rooney. <laughs> These eyebrows feel really big too. All right, we'll grab just our head. And just to kind of show an idea of what we're aiming for, I will draw a quick mask. Or actually, let's, let's use our selection brushes, our select lasso. And I want to select just our lower lip and lower portion of the mouth plus our mouth bag here and then i'm going to polygroup that selection so let's get an angle that we can select all that hide it through here as well hide it and we tried to do this yesterday but we ended up using the z remesher guides brush because the topology shut up i don't know why this keeps happening I just recently got an iPhone and Siri is like, I must interrupt your stream every day, no matter what. So I end up just turning on airplane mode. There's gotta be, I'm sure there's a way to make her shut up, but I should, I should Google that so that stops happening. <laughs> All right, let me figure out the selection a little bit better here. And then we can look at actually making some poly groups and making a, good clean remesh to work on. Move our light source. All right, so now I can just press Control W on any geometry that is by itself and that will polygroup that. So that's pretty nice. And then we can do something similar for our uh, eyes here. One thing that I like to do is kind of follow the shape, whoops, shape around here as well as around the face just to get some quick selections. I'll just do a quick few masks here. Make sure that we delete those on the back. And essentially I make like a little hero mask here. And this is just gonna help tell ZBrush that when I do a Z remesh that I want the topology to flow in this specific direction. we need to convert that into a polygroup, which is just control W. And it doesn't need to hug this edge perfectly. As long as it's close, it should do what we need it to do. Nice song. Yeah, all the music is by uh, Pop Sky. You guys should definitely check him out. He's got some really cool music. I'm a huge fan. Oh, we got a little floater back here that we want to get rid of. Love the style of the eyelash, yeah. Pretty similar to uh, what we see up here. You end up getting this like really graphic style. Something that I try to do in most of these characters just because it's typically what you see in that 2D style as well. And it's not super hard to do either, which is nice, pretty easy. Takes some time to get a clean shape. Other than that, 
nice and simple. Uh, do you also work full time at a studio on top of streaming? Uh, no, I do freelance work for physical production. So stuff like toys, life-size figures, uh, figures for museums, and some other products as well. Yeah, I've worked on stuff for, oh gosh, Hotel Transylvania, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, Ghostbusters, Pokemon, Barbie, <laughs> um, Disney, did some stuff for Iron Man, not the film, for uh, an amusement park ride. That was a pain in the neck of a project. Um, yeah, I don't know. A lot of, a lot of stuff. I've done... I mean, actually, I don't think I can talk about that one. I, I've done a bunch of stuff, but yeah. All, uh, pretty much all physical production. Uh, and with that mask, she is now Batgirl. Yeah, pretty much. Like I said, it's kind of like a hero mask. Once you start making these shapes. Uh, but this really does help the topology around the eyes. Uh, it really creates a nice uh, edge flow for that area. Not for animation purposes, because I don't care about animation for something like this. Uh, especially if I was going to be building this for animation, um, I would not, uh, I would still not care at this stage. I would just sculpt it all, still go through this process, and manually retopo it at the end of everything. The reason why I'm doing this is because clean topology actually makes it easier for me to sculpt specific forms and have control over my edge flow, etc., etc. So, specifically here, that line is missing the corner of the mouth, so I will. I'm gonna try. Uh, let's see. I guess mask lasso. I'm gonna try to select this little area here. I'll just polygroup that. Sure. I'll just kind of flow this up through here. And then uh, for this process, you know, you can do loops around the nose, around the lips, around the ears. This is, you know, something quick just to make it easier to sculpt on that I like to do. So I, I don't, I don't want to spend a ton of time on this. But if this was something that I was going to do like final sculptural topology for, I would probably spend quite a bit, quite a bit longer on it. Gosh, that looks so stupid and silly with all that stuff turned on right now. We will mess with you later. Oh, you know what? Actually, I need to still remesh and project this. What am I doing? Uh, so we will duplicate our head. And we will run a Z remesh at... Uh, sure, let's, let's try like 2K right now, which is what I had it on before. So this is taking everything on the left side of the face and retopping it to around 2K. Oh, you know what? Press escape. Please don't crash. Uh, we need to make sure that keep groups is turned on. That's the whole reason we made all those poly groups. <laughs> all right, I'll try that one more time here. Strong eyebrows. That's right, they were huge. Uh, we uh, we squished in the face and made some other proportional changes. So now it's like ginormous brows that are huge hairy caterpillars crawling across your face. Uh, what do you do for museums? Uh, I've done, let's see. Uh, I've done a few different pilots that are on my art station that you guys can go check out. I think for that project I did an F14 and a B8 bomber. Or no, wait, no. I did, where is he? I did an F14 pilot, T9 F14 pilot. And I also did uh, D.B. Cooper over here, if you guys are familiar with D.B. Cooper. 
He's the guy that like hijacked an airplane in the 70s, 80s, I don't remember. And he was never caught. It's like this cool heist story. He hijacked an airplane, stole a bunch of money, I think. I don't, I don't really exactly remember. And then he uh, parachuted off and he was like never found. It's like insane, crazy. But yeah, I've done those as well as uh, like a few other uh, like famous people for some museums. A place that I used to work at, they had two offices. I was in the one in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is where I live right now. And there's another one in Northern Ohio, which is like closer up to the Great Lakes area. And they were more like the museum side, physical, uh, like uh, silicone side of things. They actually had people that would stipple hair all day, which sounds like the most boring job in the world to me. It sounds awful, but it's amazing to watch. They're like so accurate and concise with it. It's amazing. I could never do something like that. I would die of boredom and probably screw it up. Uh, but most of the stuff that I did was, uh, most of the uh, museum stuff was up on the north side. We were more, more so toys and life-size stuff for like amusement parks or um, special events, stuff like that. that. That corner of the mouth really just like does not want to be our friend. So in conjunction with our um, little polygroups there, we could add some more resolution to this, which will probably help. But let's also use uh, the Z Remesher Guides stroke here. Oh, one project I did for a, oh, I can't remember what aquarium it was, but I got to sculpt a Humboldt penguin. I think I'm saying that right. Humboldt penguin. Humboldt, Humboldt penguin. The inside of these things mouth is terrifying. Um, but yeah, he was, he was a cutie. He was fun to sculpt. Uh, inside of penguins mouth. <laughs> Add this to my Google searches. But look at this! Look at this! This is like stuff, stuff from a freaking nightmare. They're so gross and creepy. But yes, I got to sculpt some of that, and it was cast in. Uh, it was. I think we. I don't think we milled this. I think we printed this out of PVC, and then. I think it was cast in silicone, if I remember correctly, because it had to open and close, and it was animated. But uh, inside of camel mouth, this one's also very gross. Don't ask why I know these things. Oh my god, I've never seen this picture before, but that is <laughs> terrifying. Apparently, these things help with like digestion and stuff. Up. Okay, we'll close that. We'll close that. That's grody. I can't look at that stuff. It's so nasty. Was my sister happy with the dog print? She was, she loved it, yes. A lot of fun to work on him. She, she had a sneaking suspicion. She wasn't positive though. She didn't know if she was gonna get that or not. But she was very excited, yes. She loved the, the puppy print. Yes, it does look like a Sarlacc pit. <laughs> That's what I thought the first time I saw it as well. That's funny. Oh, let's just do like one more of these guys here. And the rest of this, uh, the um, Z Remesher guides and the poly groups that we have working in conjunction should do a pretty good job of getting that all to work out. Maybe like one more in there. That might cause it to completely explode, but Yellow, that's just how I live my life. All right, remesh, remesh Rooney, let's try it out. Another thing we can do is smooth around in that mouth corner and uh, really kind of destroy a lot of the form in there and then the Z remesh should work just fine. I tend to not like to do that just because it can mess up your projection, but we shall see. This looks a little weird, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> yes, those fish die very painfully in there. Yeah, getting eaten alive doesn't really sound like my forte.
not affected by the mouths, but yeah, there are some things that gross you out. Of course, there are things that gross out everybody. What the hell is that nose? Why did you do that? All right, this is actually um, pretty workable. So I'm actually going to, oh no, that's nice. kind of annoying. Let's see, is there anywhere else that this is like really, really terrible? What the hell is that? Here, we'll, uh, I'll do one more, one more change, or actually two more. I'm gonna delete the cap just so it doesn't try to be stupid down there with its projection. And then I'm going to polygroup around the nose. I said this would be the Spark Notes version, but we're kind of doing a little bit more work than I wanted to for cleaning this up. But you know what? We'll get better results out of it, so I think it's worth it. Uh, we'll do all that. The last result was pretty good, so I think I'll just up res just a tiny bit, like 3K, and quick save. Just to make sure we don't lose anything here, and see how that does. Julie, what's going on? Welcome back. How are you doing? Two days in a row. Welcome, welcome. We are doing some quick, quote, quick <laughs> remeshing to uh, make this a little bit easier to work on. We just combined our eyelids, neck, ears, and I think that's all. <laughs> but now we can start cleaning up some stuff here. Hey, 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 that's looking a lot better. Still some parts where there's some stretching and pulling and terrible stuff here in the nose. Oh my goodness, you stupid, stupid nose. Why? Why gotta be so, so cruel? That was pretty good, but the nose is just being a little, a little meh. I feel like we could, I feel like it's worth spending, you know, a few extra minutes just to make sure we can get something a little bit easier to work with and not have a ton of pinched areas right in the middle of our face, which is always super annoying. I feel like a crazy person rocking back and forth, waiting, waiting, all right. <laughs> I don't know why it put that vert all the way up there, but <laughs> other than that, uh, I think I think that'll probably do us, do us some pretty solid work. There is like one crappy star right there. I wonder if I could I wonder if there's some cheating that I can do to move that very quickly. Oh my god, why are you so laggy? You know what, I think this is just fine the way it is. It doesn't need to be perfect, but that looks pretty, pretty good for um, what we're going to do here moving forward. Uh, what I will do though is just, there's so many uh, unnecessary edge loops down here that are just gonna needlessly give us more topology. So, just a couple, couple of these in the neck that we don't need can go away. All right, that looks pretty good. So from here, the next step would be to make sure that we have that old geometry here, the high res underneath it or just visible, it doesn't have to be under it. Just when you click duplicate, it happens to put the old one underneath it. So we will control D, subdivide, do a projection. And the important area that we're gonna look at here is the corner of the mouth and the eyes. Make sure that we're not getting too much stretching. Also the back of the ears on our last character had some awkward projections going on back there. So we'll look at there after we're done too. And maybe one more, maybe, maybe. Wow. All right. Well, we'll just hang. Oh, never mind. One more. We can do it. All right. 
I think uh, I think I will not do another projection. I'll just do that subdiv. Uh, and the ears actually look pretty clean. The way you can like double check on this kind of stuff is look at your negative mesh and just make sure you have double turned on. That looks pretty good. And for the face, that also looks pretty good from what I can see here. This always confuses my brain when you're like looking at this and it makes it look like it's 3D. If I were to move my light, it looks like this is the front of our face. But as we rotate around, like all of a sudden you're like, oh, my brain, oh. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those in like haunted attraction rides. I remember at uh, Kings Island, if you guys have ever heard of Kings Island, it's a popular uh, amusement park in the Cincinnati area. But they had some ride there, it's like some haunted, I don't, I don't know what it is, but I think now it's like a Scooby-Doo ride or something. But they had these faces in the wall that were like inset for that like negative type thing. And they were lit in such a way from, uh, I guess the, would it be the bottom? I think it would be the bottom. So that it looked like the face was always following you and looking at you. Very creepy. But I always thought those were the coolest thing when I was a kid. I still kind of do. <laughs> I'm still kind of a kid. Finger's so cold, it's hard to work. Oh my gosh, I hate that. My hands are always like frozen. It's terrible. Oh my gosh. I, ooh, I just gave myself a little hair splinter. I've not had that happen in forever, jeez. You can always get some fingerless gloves, go Ash Ketchum style. <laughs> All right, so now we got something a lot more clean to work on, which is awesome. We can step up and down through our subdivs. So let's just do a, uh, a quick pass on our face and try to fix some of the things that have been bothering us that are now so much easier to fix now that we have all of this combined, which is fantastic. I love when we get to this stage because now things are starting to really shape up and a lot easier to fix some of that garbaggio that we've been dealing with for a while. There's a little strong like collection of verts back behind the ear there, but really I'm not not too worried about it. It's not really a prominent area and we can just kind of smooth it out, clean it up. As for this area here, I think I'll just kind of fill that in ever so slightly just to get that to start uh, wrapping and transitioning there. Uh, and then I think we'll probably mess with just like the shape of our face from the silhouette quite a bit. If we, would, if we open up this gal here, I'll turn off perspective. Snap it to the canvas and look at our face here. There are, uh, I think, what I would like to do is bring in our mouth a little bit because this is something that's been bothering me for a little bit and try to get like a little bit of a better form here on the front of the face because this feels like, feels a little too flat to me and I feel like we could round that out a little bit more. And again, we're not you know aiming for that exact face we're just using that as an example. I do want to get a little bit more narrow, I think, on the chin. Where'd we go? All right, so that will be the first thing that we do from the silhouette. Let's grab up here, mask that off. Get a little bit more volume up there from the silhouette. This also helps that face wrap a lot more from that top view. Remember how we looked at that top view and it was looking really boxy earlier? This will definitely help with that as well. 
and as well as this area here that's been, I think, just sticking out far, far too long. So let's just work on that, plus the, uh, the nose here and how this is kind of fading up into that area. And we're getting some nice wrap in a lot of these areas now, which is great. Just a matter of really focusing in on the construction of this in those early stages. It makes, once you get to this stage, it makes a lot of this a lot you know, more simple because you've put in a lot of the, the hard brain power early on to get where you are now. Really the hardest part of any character sculpt is those initial stages where you're just trying to figure out proportions and really get that likeness down as much as you can. Once you start getting past a lot of that stuff, you know, Obviously focusing in on appeal and making stuff look good is not, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but uh, it starts to, starts to kind of pick up a little bit, get a little bit more simple. Uh, started implementing this method into my workflow and it's so much easier to work on the sculpt. Thanks so much for all the tips. Well, absolutely. My pleasure, as Chick-fil-A would say. Glad it's been helpful. Winter is coming. Winter is here. Now, Yeah, winter here in the Midwest is is painful. Not as bad as it is, you know, in some places, but I would prefer to live somewhere more south, more warm myself, honestly. Maybe in the future. Not a not a fan of the cold too much anymore. I used to be when I was um a kid because I lived very close to a, um, a ski park. Uh, more of, less a mountain, more of hill that they produced artificial snow on. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's a very popular area that people go to around here. But I used to live very close to it and I would always look forward in the winter to being able to go there. I stopped going though. Uh, I, I still have my snowboard it's down in my garage. But uh, I stopped going just because it got, you know, really expensive to continue going. I think the last like year and a half or two years that I went there, I never ended up buying a pass. But me and <laughs> me and a couple of my friends would just sneak on <laughs> because uh, one of our friends, whose name was <laughs> his name, uh, and never mind, <laughs> he, it, his dad worked there and. Uh, our buddy knew all the, the secret areas where we could sneak on. Pretty, you know, pretty tight, pretty cool. We knew all the lifts to avoid so that we wouldn't get our tags checked. Yeah, I'd be sneaky about that stuff. We were good kids, all right? Look, we didn't do it very often, probably. It's not important. But yeah, anymore, I'm like, so done with the cold. Fifteen degrees Fahrenheit outside your apartment? Oof. Sounds awful. For some reason, it is extremely warm today. I checked the temperature this morning. I think it said it's going to be 60 today, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like fall weather like even on a cool summer day that's what we would expect that's insane the weather here is so stupid i mean the weather everywhere is so stupid i feel like here it's just extra stupid um let's see 
looks roboty. Is it a robot? It is not. It is not a robot. No. No. As we start to smooth out more hard transitions, it will look less and less robot-y. Inky, what's going on, man? Sorry I missed your message there. How you doing, brother? Uh, ways, ways to be banned. <laughs> no, Seagull, you're fine. <laughs> hey, this kind of looks bad. Like, did you notice how bad this looks? Did you try making it not look bad? I have. I have tried. I just can't do it, though, guys. I can't. I can't make it not look bad. It's just who I am. It's how I work. <laughs> Banhammer! My stream, my rules. Only compliments allowed. Minus four degrees. Oh, that's that's pretty terrible. Raining in San Fran. I've never been to San Francisco. I've been very close. I've been to Anaheim, which I think is maybe like an hour or two away. Ohio Valley weather is insane. I mean, I think it was here. Yeah, guys, let's talk about the weather. Welcome to my stream. Welcome to my stream where we talk about the weather. No, shut up, phone. Okay, so it's 60 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Tomorrow, it's going to be 30 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, it's just dumb. But I feel like that's how it is everywhere. Uh, could you imagine a stream that actually only ever had compliments? It would feel like the Twilight Zone. Do 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 do. I love the Twilight Zone. Yes, it would though. My dad, uh, my dad and I used to watch the Twilight Zone all the time when I was growing up. Anaheim is like six hours. I flew in on uh, what's like the big air air airport arena in Cali. I thought that was a lot closer. Look, I've been to Cali like once. All right, you know it doesn't matter. It's all it's all right next to each other in my mind. That's what that's what really matters. All right, let's plane out some of these areas here where we're just getting like this awkward form transition, as well as softening this edge because like that transition's not not really doing me anything that I like here. Look guys, I will move the city myself to make it, what did I say, a couple hours away? I will take care of it. You love snow? <gasps> Gasp. I used to like snow a lot. Like I said, going snowboarding and skiing all the time. Getting that, then fresh, fresh snowfalls to snowboard on was always nice. It's all about the powder, brah. Alright, I uh, want to do something in Transpose Master. We'll adjust everything here in just a moment. All the separate pieces of geometry that we've been neglecting. We've been paying a little bit too much attention to just our face. I'm going to fix the angle of the face here really quick because we're far too angled down right now. So what I'm going to do is just set a pivot point back here. Try to fix some of this from the silhouette. Try not to break it too much. But you guys know me. You guys know I love breaking 
breaking sculpts. Oh my god, freaking symmetry, you're the worst. X symmetry go. We'll redo all that because I didn't have symmetry on. If I'm gonna keep those little teeth in there, I probably won't. I'll probably just delete them here in a moment, but <laughs> I need to add some subdiz to that thing. Feels so funny. Hmm. I'm gonna play with that area a little bit more. Possibly, um. Hmm. Hmm. Possibly, um. Pulling in on here a little bit. Let's see if that helps from the three quarter view. From the three quarter, those eyes feel like they're bugging out a little bit too much. I think that kind of helps there. Plus, adding some more volume will also help. But let's mess with some of the other facial features that we have been neglecting, as I mentioned. But before that, love when the snow settles, but hate when it becomes slush puppy. <laughs> yeah, that's always pretty gross. Only the Cali natives will nitpick. <laughs> Uh, there's like only one, for the entire tri-state area where I live, there's only like one major airport. So, perspective. <laughs> there's a series of storms lining up in the Pacific. Whoa. Is it, is it the storm? Isn't that fun? Is it the big one? The one that has been foretold. For generations. Alright, let's uh... For this like little quick body thing that we put in at the beginning of our stream yesterday, never did anything with. I'll just uh, very quickly make this into something. And then we'll just, <laughs> feels so stupid, then we'll just all the uh, eyebrows, eyelashes, etc in there. So I'm just focusing on trying to make a quick, clean, appealing shape. I, I know it's like a little dirty right now, but really that doesn't matter. Very easy to uh, clean up after I get the shape that I'm looking for, get the generals. Who are we making today? Uh, we're not making anyone specific today. We are uh, yesterday we started doing a quick tutorial on the processes for sculpting a stylized and appealing face, female face here in ZBrush. So we started from a sphere and the whole objective was to go through and uh, start from scratch, go through, talk about all the tools, brushes, and everything else that we uh, that we use during our process and try to be as informative as I could. So there is uh, the first video in this up on my YouTube channel. If you guys want to check that out from where we started. And today is going to be our last day on this face, I think. Uh, but yeah, you know, just something quick, something simple, something clean, uh, and talking through as much of it as I can. So yesterday we put in all the parts and pieces, all the... Um, different parts of the face, eyes, ears, mouth, lips, nose, etc. And today we are focusing on bringing that more into 
uh, an appeal, which is, I don't know, maybe you could say that's the harder part of the process, but I'm trying to just explain as much as I can. I'm just gonna keep that like little block out there. I don't know if anything, it could just move it up. I'm not gonna spend too much time on making this shape. I just wanted something quick and simple down there. This is a quick little piece of hair that we did yesterday that we will either delete or uh, do something with later. Let's realign our eyelashes here. Using our, mainly just our move brush. This lid is kind of getting a weird S curve in there, so let's fix that up. And let's see. Definitely, I <laughs> kind of planed this out. We'll look at the face here in a moment. Let me finish, um, finish adjusting these so that we can actually have them in a decent place. Sure, leave them there for now. I'll add a couple quick subdivs and our eyebrows. We will do the same. These are much too large from our scale changes that we made earlier. Let's just scale in, move out. None of this is creased on this shape, so it should be pretty simple. I'm just kind of move these. There's a number of different shapes that we can do for stylized eyebrows. I'm just doing something, you know, a little bit rounded right now. You can make them a little bit sharper. If you want to give them kind of that like bitch brow look, essentially. But you know, something simple, something quick is totally fine. I guess for our eyes. While we're here doing all this stuff, we can also do our quick little pupil. I guess our eyes are no longer facing directly ahead. So let me fix that. Oh, you know what? Oh no, they're not. The eyeball actually has a little bit of twist on it, but that should be close enough. Uh, that's probably fine for scale. So what I'll do is just control W, polygroup that, toy plastic material, fill in the white, and then fill in black for the iris area. Just like that. And then we'll grab our center rotation point, rotate out a little bit, If anything, make them a little bit larger. And then we can, you know, start working on our face and <laughs> fixing all this garbage that we just quickly marked up really quick. Quickly, really quick. That's right. Those are the words that I just said with my my smart mouth. <laughs> Making lessons, rock on. That's right, yeah. Lost power for a few minutes. Oh gosh, what happened? And then of course, as I mentioned yesterday, if I go over anything too quick here, or if I do anything uh, and I don't explain it well enough, just let me know. We'll go back over it a little bit slower. All right, let's uh, close up this mouth. use move back face masking to add just a little bit more volume to that bottom lip and then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the top lip but let's get in here and look at that by itself hmm maybe a little bit too much on the outside there so to counter that a little bit of smooth a little bit of trim maybe let's just 
Try a little bit of smooth there. And we're still feeling like a little bit too pinched there in that front part of the upper lip. So that's what I've been trying to adjust here by doing some pushing and pulling around that area. Oh boy, Tato Malfus, welcome and thank you for the subscription, man. Two in one day, Tato, I appreciate that a lot, dude. Oh my goodness is right, jeez. We'll be doing some more stylized faces, I guess, here. I mean, it's pretty much all I do, but <laughs> thank you, man. It means a lot. Three months, that's right. Awesome, dude. Start of a new year. New year, pretty much the same thing, just better, right? That's the whole point. Oh god. So if you guys use the Selection Lasso brush a lot, which I do, it's the one that lets you kind of just do like a marquee selection really quick in a lasso shape, kind of like in Photoshop. Uh, first, it has like this old feature. Some people like it, I, I do not. I wish I could turn it off, but uh, it has this uh, edge loop selection function. So if you control shift click on an edge, it will select that edge loop uh, or hide that edge loop, one of either or, it doesn't really matter. But you can use that to select specific edge loops if you want. I normally just want to be able to select my poly groups. So sometimes I have to select, uh, use my select rectangle brush, which will uh, do that no matter where you click. I wish you could turn that functionality off. It's something, something I would like. I know that's like something really specific, but still, I would like that something that would make my sculpting process a lot less frustrating. Save your work. Always save your work, absolutely. Get that quick save going now. That's why when I'm about to do like big remesh or anything like that, I will take the time to manually hit that quick save button. Just real fast. Make sure we avoid any, you know, random power outages or anything like that. That's pretty crazy though, random power outage. Actually, um, it hasn't happened in a while here, but when I first moved in, it was real bad. We used to get power outages all the time. Come home to the clocks being all messed up and everything else. It's no fun. And my computer being off because I never turn this thing off. I probably should. I do from time to time, but mainly just sleep mode. I like to be able to just sit down and get right to work. Yes, save often is. Save as often as you possibly can. Got a big UPS a year ago for power outages. Uh, is that some like kind of backup power supply? A U power supply? I don't know what the U is. I'm guessing it's like gas or something. Most of those are gas powered, right? It's been a while since there's been like a really big or terrible power outage around here. work on this um, taper and roundness of the face as it comes out here. It's feeling a bit too pointy. So I have my light on the uh, bottom there to kind of get like a little bit 
better view on some of the awkward shadows. Makes it a little bit easier to see some areas. And it also gives us a nice creepy lighting for our sculpt, which is always fun. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's make some proportional changes here. Try to get us a little bit of a, whoops, a little bit of a more thin face if we can. So I think we're definitely closer in that appealing direction now, which is great. Just a matter of continuing to push it further and further from here. Honestly, I would say that in terms of like the tutorial point of, of our you know, lesson here, I would say this is probably a good place to stop, but um, I would like to just kind of continue. Continue working on this gal. I'm having fun working on her. And it's not like it can get any worse, right? I mean, it could. <laughs> it absolutely could, but we will, we will try not to let that happen. This nose, this this plane here just needs to flatten quite a bit. I think that's kind of where that that area is happening. That's annoying me. And I don't want to be able to see any of these strokes, so we'll take the time to clean up a lot of this. Still looking at that three-quarter view. I feel like um, I feel like I want to get like a little taller. I feel a little squashed, a little too round for some of what I was trying to accomplish here. Proportional check on like a stretch to see if we can maybe make the face a little bit taller. See how that would feel. Eh. Meh. That's what I say to that. Let's do. I'm going to delete our little hair that we made here and instead insert. I showed off the process for creating this yesterday just because I wanted to get it out of the way. But right now what I would like to do instead is just insert some very simple hair that we can kind of block out really quick. I like to just use spheres for blocking out hair when you're trying to figure out some of these early shapes. Just start with something clean and simple. Make it tall and look like Oompa Loompa hair. That looks, no joke, straight up like an Oompa Loompa without even trying. Oompa Loompa. Let me see this Oompa Loompa hair. Dude, this is, oh wow, sexy Oompa Loompa costume for Halloween. We did it guys, we got it in one. <laughs> oh God. All right, let's, uh, let's just kind of push and pull some stuff around. Do some quick blocking out. That's so funny. It's easy, guys. You, too, can become a 3D artist and make Oompa Loompas. So what I recommend doing, if you're just trying to block out and figure out your hairstyle, your shape, stuff that you want to wanna do with your hairs, just grab a, uh, grab a sphere. Plop it on there and start sculpting away, trying to find something that you like. Kind of get like a nice bowl cut going on here. <laughs> Maybe wrap it around the ears. I don't know, we can just kind of sculpt around with this for a little while. We don't have to make anything too specific, but just to kind of show off what I would do if I was, you know, blocking out something, trying to figure out what kind of hairstyle I want to go for. You could even use separate meshes if you wanted to create your bangs separately or even what I recommend typically doing is just breaking symmetry 
I'm trying to create something a little bit more visually interesting. Let's see, we'll just grab that Dynamesh and try to get away from Oompa Loompa Town. Uninterrupted power supply. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. UPS. Hold a big charge and they aren't gas anymore. That's pretty neat, huh? Pretty bad power outage last year with it being a whole day. Yeah, there was a few years ago where some, uh, one of the hurricanes, I don't remember which one, uh, made it all the way up here and the storm were, storms were so bad that it knocked out a bunch of power for for people. I think, uh, I think my power was out for like a couple days, but in some places it was out for like over a week. It was crazy. Insanity. Just seems like something that you wouldn't think could happen until it does. I don't know, let's just grab our pinch brush and start sliding around in Palupa Town here. Uh, how did I get started in the industry? No, I don't mind you asking at all. I started off, uh, I've, I've told the, the story of how I like got into digital sculpting many times, but Essentially, I started off, uh, in college I wanted to get into 3D animation, and I thought that that would be something real neat, I was very interested in that, and I kind of played around with that idea for a while until I decided that it really wasn't for me, got into, you know, 3D modeling more and more, discovered ZBrush, really kind of pushed on that for a long, what I, I, I don't know, maybe not a long time. Essentially what happened was I was playing around with Mudbox and uh, I was going on a study abroad trip. I wanted to take Mudbox with me, but my laptop couldn't run Mudbox. So I had to uh, find like a different solution. And ZBrush doesn't re require a graphics card, which Mudbox does or did at the time. I haven't, I haven't touched Mudbox like since then. But um, <laughs> and neither should you. Uh, that's not true. Maybe it is. Maybe it's a little true. Uh, but essentially, yeah, got into ZBrush from there. Played around with ZBrush a lot. Kind of gave myself a, a little bit of an arbitrary goal of like two years to get a full-time job doing something with ZBrush. At that time, I was like, so clueless, I had no idea what even any possibilities could be, you know, 3D modeling at all. So I knew some of the options, but I didn't know, you know, like the full picture or how difficult and competitive the industry truly is. But uh, yeah, I started doing some freelance work for a company, uh, for a couple companies, in, uh, one, and one of them was local to me at the time, and I think I freelanced for them for like a, probably like a couple months, maybe three or so. I don't know. It's kind of like a long, long process of kind of going back and forth on stuff. Uh, but yeah, eventually, eventually they offered me a full-time job and wham, bam, slam. Just kept working up from there, doing more stuff. So that was like kind of my first professional job. Other than if you don't include, uh, freelance work, which, you know, I, I personally absolutely would. Freelance is, freelance is a whole nother animal. This body thing is stupid and it's in the way and I don't like it. All right, let's create some better shapes. Give me a Ziri mesh, please. Keep groups. Oh no, don't, don't keep groups. Fix groups, then keep groups. They've always just been big batteries. Yeah, I guess in a way. Yes, I'll take the quadruple A battery, please. But yeah, I don't know. That I think everybody has like a pretty similar story to getting their kind of first 
you know, start your, get, get your foot in the door somehow and just go from there. The industry, the industry, right? It's so competitive depending on what you're trying to do. Even if you are, you know, qualified and a really good candidate, there's a number of factors that could just, you know, disclude you from from being the right person for that for that job. So don't beat yourself up, everybody, if you're still working towards that area and trying to figure stuff out. You'll get there eventually. It just takes a long, long time. But everybody had to go through the exact same thing. Mudbox High DPI for 3D painting is not that bad. I've never, never used it. But uh, I'm pretty sure Mari is still the industry standard with Photoshop integration. I'm not sure if Mari does that or not. I don't really use Mari. It's never been a great software, can confirm. Uh, thanks for sharing, yeah, no problem. How difficult was it to get freelance work? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not easy, I'll say that. Kind of, kind of like getting, you know, uh, in-person work. <laughs> you got to be at the right place, right time, and be the right fit for the uh, for the job. Started off using Mudbox as well, Julie. Nice, nice. Like ZBrush a bit better. Let's see. Where'd our stupid little body thing go. Uh, maybe we can do something with this. I don't know. I wasn't planning on it. Or we could just drop this head on a body over there. Maybe. Just like append it. Eh, let's just continue playing around with what we got. Subdivs on that? No. Okay. Oh no, my image is in the way. Hold on. Uh, loser. Loser? <laughs> loser, XD. I'm gonna go with Loser. Welcome, or Lozier. Welcome to the stream and thanks for the follow. How's it going? Loser. What's going on, Lozier? I'm gonna stick with that. That sounds, that sounds correct to me. But welcome. Hello, hello. I was doing freelance work for a while and then finally got con contract work at a studio close by. Ended up doing some life-size life character statues for 3D printing. Awesome, well there you go. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Not a, never thought I would end up 
there, but I love I'm loving this side of 3D modeling too. Yeah. Right? I you rarely I don't know. It's, I didn't even know that was a thing, right? It sounds like you didn't either. I I, I think a lot of people don't. You gotta come from somewhere, right? Uh, I, I, I wasn't going to do a full body and I'm still not. I was just kind of blocking something out really quick so that we didn't just have a floating head, which never really feels super great by itself. Nuclear Dan, welcome back, dude. Dude, 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 dude. Uh, goal this year is to start learning ZBrush. Really want to get into more stylized characters. Well, that sounds like a cool goal. I'm into it. I love me some ZBrush. Hang out here with the cool kids. We'll, uh, I'll teach you everything I know. And then, like, imagine I'm like tussling your hair or something. <laughs> You little scamp. Definitely join up to the uh, official and community ZBrush Discords. So you can hang out, ask questions, and get some feedback, whips, whip critiques, etc. After almost 30 years in the industry, now I do contract work in the basement. Very nice. <laughs> I do that from my office, which has very bright, um, what are they called, bay windows here where I'm always getting blasted by the sun. I, uh, I, I hate working in, I don't mind dark environments, just not like all day. It just gets too depressing. So I got some, I even have some like studio lights in here for at night because it just gets so dark. I'm scared of the dark guys. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, thanks to you and Shane, I'm learning a lot. Right now, I just do a lot of hard surface stuff. Well, awesome, man. Glad I've been of help, as well as Shane. For those who don't follow Shane, go check out Shane Olson. He also streams on the Pixelogic ZBrush channel. I think he was streaming just yesterday. We gave him, yeah, that's right, we gave him a quick raid at the end of our stream. He's a great guy. He's got some really cool stuff, and he has... Uh, I think it's called, I don't want to say this incorrectly, so I think it's called 3D Character Workshop? I think it's just called that. I believe this is it. Yes, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. This is Shane's, uh, Shane's little class here. Uh, but yeah, you can get some of his brushes and some other stuff on there for free. Oh, that's muted. That's fine to go. But yeah, go check out some of Shane's work. Go check out his workshop as well. That sounds like something that you guys would be interested in. Yeah. I think he... I don't remember these being on here last time I visited. He's got some cool stuff on there. Great dude. Great teacher. And great god, I'm getting blinded by this freaking sun. Oh, your basement has windows. There you go. The best of both worlds. It gets too hot in here. I'm, you know, up a level. Need that basement temp. Keep it nice and cool. 
what are we doing with this? I was just gonna block something out really quick and now I'm just noodling around and we're getting, getting beyond the scope of what we intended. That's, that should be the name of my stream. <laughs> Oops, went, spent, spent way too long doing this thing. That was supposed to take five minutes. We'll go back to the face in just a second. I'll probably delete most of that bottom area, but you know, we'll get something in there. And then for these, I was just going to kind of like bust mode, um, Delete, close holes, mirror and weld. I don't really care now. I'm just like, yeah, sure, just cut it. Why? Stop. Delete those. Being dumb, ZBrush. Just so we got something other than just a floating head. Now we have a floating body as well. <laughs> and then uh, if we want to make this more of a shirt, it would be really easy to like put a little collar around here as well. Uh, one way that I like to do kind of interactive type stuff is duplicating that thing that would interact with that and then either adding it or subtracting that boolean out. In this case, it would be just a quick subtractive boolean. So merge it down and dynamesh that head out. And just like that, we can kind of make a quick, quick little interaction for a shirt, like a quick collar or something. Just for something quick. The arms feel like really fat and big, but you know what? That's okay. We don't really, we don't really care. That wasn't the point of this lesson today. I'll just kind of trim that out. Sure, looks good enough, right? That's what we like to say, it's good enough. Uh, Kana Sita, I believe, welcome. Welcome to the stream, how you doing? Maybe a little bit too thick on the sleeve, like I said. So we'll just do a quick scale in, something fast. Give us our rest of our quick body. And then I say we go back to playing with our hair that we started blocking out. All right, cool, cool, cool. Let's do that now. Oh man, this is, it's gonna bother me. Some of these shapes are just, mm, meh, not good. I hate how. That transitions. I can't help it guys, I can't help but obsess over all the things. It's not my fault. It's just who I am. Alright, hair, hair, hair. Back to the hair. Hey ya, hey ya. Uh so when I'm blocking out hair, you know, just clay tubes, whatever, just to add some volume, figure out some of the shapes that you wanna make. You can also use a negative stroke if you're trying to like round something out or something like that. I don't know, we can play around with this. Grab that snake hook. Blam, bam. Make like a ponytail here, something.
we'll continue to play with this shape for a little bit. Uh, doing all right, working off of a concept this time, or just free form? So, uh, I have this sculpt here that I created a while ago that's just kind of like a simple stylized character base mesh that's pretty neutral. Simple, something that we can like repurpose for a lot of stuff and then kind of like rework the face if we need to. So I wanted to uh, start yesterday. We started from a sphere and just kind of went through, kind of piecemeal through each part of the process, talking about specific tools, specific brushes, specific, you know, kind of mindsets and just ideas that we want to do for this. So yesterday we started from a sphere, got up to uh, pretty far, just kind of getting all the pieces of the face in there, parts and pieces. And then uh, today our focus has been on pushing what we got done with yesterday into more of an appealing uh, kind of kind of stage. So that is what we are doing today. We're, we're getting there. We're starting to get a lot more uh, a lot closer, I would say, to that final kind of look that we're, we're aiming for. But one step at a time. And there's a lot of stuff that we could sit here and play with for a while. But, you know, I want to take some time to show off as much as I can in terms of, you know, different ideas for sculpting hair, blocking out form, all this good stuff. Yeah, lots of fun. Always fun when we're doing some sculpting in the brush. And let's see. I am going to take my sharp soft edge brush here. And just kind of push in a little bit along the hairline. Just something quick. I'm just trying to block out some form, right? Pinch is also great for these kind of areas. Kind of tighten up some shape. Whoops. Start to get that to kind of dip in there a little bit more consistently along that edge. And then once I figured out what shape I wanted to do for my hair, I would probably take some time to like block out um, or after blocking out, um, split up some stuff into some different shapes and really work on cleaning things up and getting it to a nice, concise kind of look and feel throughout the whole hair. And then after I was done with that, you know, you could go over top and add texture. But it's pretty much the same process for sculpting everywhere or everything. Primary, secondary, tertiary. So block out, make sure you find those uh, big shapes that you're looking for and don't move forward or move on until you're you know, really happy with those. They will change later, but still kind of push as far as you can on those. And then you can start focusing on refinement, those secondary forms and really, um, really starting to take that to the next level. And then you can focus after all of that's done on like texture, details, that kind of thing. But not until you get those really good First, uh, first stage, second stage, and then final details. Not until then can you focus on the, the details. And no amount of detailing is going to, you know, help a, a crappy sculpt that you got. There's nothing you can do to save that. So stay in those early stages for a long time. Focus on them. Become one with the primary forms. Or something. I don't know. <laughs> A 
love working on hair? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's really rewarding when you, um, when you sculpt up some hair that actually looks like hair. <laughs> Once you get to that stage where things really start coming together, it's a, it just feels good. Ooh, that's kind of cutting into the neck there, isn't it? Let's see, what can we do here to turn this edge a little bit better? I think uh, maybe the standard brush would be good here. That good old standard brush that I never use. Obviously not never, because I just used it, but very rarely do I end up using the standard brush. I more so just use the standard brush for like poly painting and stuff like that. Just kind of pushing and pulling stuff around, not really looking for anything specific. Just focusing on some nice clean initial shapes, thinking about some of those early kind of fundamentals like thick to thin and tapered shapes, straights versus curves. Okay, and some asymmetry here so it's not so boring. And yeah, I don't know. I could play with this for a while. Or we can move on to some more stuff in the face. Hawk is now hosting. Well, thanks, Hawk. Hawk 3D. Appreciate it. Uh, very impressive. Well, thank you, man. It's very nice of you. Uh, how do I get these brushes? The uh, main brushes that I use are available on my Gumroad. There's just a link down below. It's Gumroad slash Polygon. Sorry, I missed your message. Looks like that was a while ago. Uh, just scroll on down, Folygon brushes, five bucks. You get these plus any and all updates for the future. I add brushes to these uh, every once in a while. I have some other, I think I only have one other set of brushes on here actually, which is my curve brushes that I use. Uh, you can get those for, for a dollar. It's got like four different curve brushes in it. But yeah, check it out, Gumroad slash Folygon. Um, would be odd if you were intentionally making hair and end up looking like a motorcycle or something. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. But hair is tough. That's why I say, uh, you know, it feels good once you, once you get to that area, that part where things really start coming together and looking really good. Hair is the most difficult part for you, Kana. Yeah, like I said, hair is tough. Very tough. Uh, you always seem to find concepts that involve fur textures. Uh, I mean, it might just be maybe you're gravitated towards the, the fur textures. I don't know. But if you go on ArtStation, browse that trending page, you'll, you will find a kajillion, if that's even a number, cool concepts that you can work from. What I do is I just go on here and find some cool 2D concepts, save off an image, and then I come back to it later if I end up working on something. Hawk, thank you for the uh, follow there. Appreciate it, dude. Appreciate it, dude. Uh, do you do commissions? Uh, probably not commissions in the traditional sense. I don't really... I'll say this. Uh, I charge a professional rate for my, uh, quote, commissions. I don't... Not like a... When I hear the term commission, I think of, like, deviant art uh, commissions. So I'll say no. <laughs> Uh, but if you want to email me with a project idea, I'm all ears. I'm always open to new and interesting projects, but uh, just keep that in mind. Um, if you want to shoot me an email, it's just polygon at gmail.com. Uh, my name at gmail.com. Without the underscore, obviously. Uh, I make 3D printing videos on YouTube. Very cool. I have also made some 3D printing videos, more so tutorials. Uh, very interesting to see. Awesome, man. Yeah. I love me some 3D printing. What, uh, what kind of printers do you got? Or, 
printer. You got any SLA on ya? I love me some SLA. Or more so some FDM, working on some PVC and I feel like most people don't really do ABS. I would prefer, I prefer to work in PVC. ABS is a little finicky with the temp and everything. <laughs> you won't sculpt my fursona for five whole doll hairs? Oh my, get out of here. Get out of here, Kana. I'm, I'm dropping, I'm dropping it. I'm dropping the hammer. <laughs> No, I will not. I will not sculpt your fursona. No, no comment. Shame. Yeah, it is a shame. This is still like cutting into the neck more than I want. So I guess, ooh, I guess I'll just like remesh it real quick. What about collabs? Uh, shoot me an email. Let me know what you got in terms of ideas. Like I said, I'm always open to new ideas. SLA is awesome, it sure is. Sorry, I got like an eyelash hanging out on my contact lens. It's not doing me any favors. <laughs> Uh, can you sculpt my OC and send me the files and a 3D print of it? I'll share the results on Twitter. The exposure will really help you take off. I, I think you're right. Yeah. Okay. Shoot me an email. I'll get right on it. <laughs> uh, you have two Prusa MK3s. Uh, Trillab. Oh, I'm not familiar with Trillab. Delta Q Large. Trillab. Trilab. Ah, Trilab. I see. Trilab, I'm not familiar with. Uh, Ultimaker 2, I like I like the Ultimaker machines a lot. And a 3, BCM, 3D, Sigmax, and a Lulzbot. How do you like your Lulzbot? I remember when the Lulzbot first came out and I was looking at him for a while and I've seen some, some pretty nice prints coming out of those. How do you like your Lulzbot, say, compared to your Ultimaker 3? I really like the Ultimaker machines. They're really good for FDM. Uh, Nuclear Dan says PLA, question mark? Uh, PLA plastic, yeah, it's a type of plastic. The two most popular types of plastic for FDM printing are, uh, are actually the two most common materials are PLA plastic and uh, ABS. Sorry, I forgot how to spell plastic. <laughs> uh, typically what you're probably thinking of when you think of you know, F or 3D printing is FDM printing, which is a spool of material that looks like a spool of weed whacker material. And uh, what's FDM? F fusion filament deposit? I can't remember. Fused deposit modeling, not filament deposit. Fused deposit modeling. So that's probably what you think of, you know, when you a lot of people think of 3D printing, they think of like an extruder and it farts out the, the plastic layer by layer. Um, I, I, <laughs> I've talked about the 3D printer that I purchased most recently uh, and how I never got it. Um, but yeah, one of the most popular SLA machines, it's just, you know, most popular resin based printing. It's becoming more and more uh, affordable for like, you know, just a hobbyist to own one. Thank you, uh, L Nika. L is it L? Thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. How you doing? Uh, but yeah, the most popular SLA printers are like the Form machines. So Form Labs Form Two is probably kind of like the one to aim for. They're pretty expensive though. Love me some SLA though. Um, let's see. <laughs> Exposure is so hot right now. Come on. Yeah, I'll, I'll get right on that. Shoot me them OC files. Yeah, it, I, I feel like using the term OC immediately 
immediately just um, knocks you down, knocks you down a peg. My OC. I imagine. I also imagine that OC strictly refers to Sonic the Hedgehog characters that are recolored. I'll give you good exposure, dude. Plus, I'm in the UK. Ooh. Uh, what would be the best hobbyist 3D printer if you're just starting out? Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of um, really good and cheap FDM machines. I would try. So if I was like just buying my first 3D printer, back in the day I would say like get a kit and build one yourself just so like you understand the ins and outs of everything. So if something breaks, you can you know fix it yourself. I would say that like now it's not really that big of a deal just because it's so much more popular and you know if you do run into a problem you don't know how to fix there's probably someone online that can that can help you out. But yeah, I, I don't know in terms of specific printer. What I would aim for though is just look at print quality and try to get something with a decently sized bed and try to find a, a print quality that you look at and you, or you know try to get someone else's opinion that you trust and uh, decide from there. An Ender 3. Ender machines are nice. Four and a half thousand subs on YouTube. YouTube. Holy schmauz out. And four on Twitter. Crushing it. I'll definitely check you out, man. Definitely shoot me an email. I actually... I used to, like, really track my social stuff. I don't even remember how many I have on YouTube right now. It's probably close to that. Check out the Ender. Heard good things about the Ender 3. I've never used the Ender 3 specifically. Four fifty euros for an any cubic photon. I mean, you could get something even. What does euro convert to in U.S.? Didn't it used to be like two to one? Is it now like one and a half? But yeah, I would say like six hundred U.S. You could get like a pretty good. Pretty good FDM machine. I don't really know what your budget is, but that might be <laughs> actually that might be a good place to start for um, for like what you're aiming for in terms of what printer you want to get, what you want to look for. Start with the price range and then work your way down from there or up or whatever. I need to print out one of my cats. <laughs> I do not have enough real life cats. Therefore, I have turned to 3D printing. I actually, since we're talking about 3D printing, and it's been a while since I've showed some of these off. This chair does not slide very well. Let's grab a few of these. A few of my 3D Fusion, you know, SLA, er, sorry. Whoa, stop. These are the full color sandstone prints that I uh, used to do through Shapeways. I have not done one recently, but I was thinking that we could do one here soon. This is a Spyro plus Lapras character. It was really fun to work on. Uh, and then I have like a, I have like 15-ish, like 15-ish or so, I don't know. Pikachu Totoro, you know, for those that have not seen these before, there is a link down below to my 3D print shop where you don't have to buy one, but you can just do a quick browse so you can see all the different 3D prints that we got. Banjo and Kazooie in the style of Angry Birds. Love me some 
Banjo and Kazooie. But yeah, there's a bunch of these. I won't take the time to show every single one off since we're trying to do some sculpting today and talk through our process and everything. But yeah, I don't know. I, I think we're kind of past the tutorial stage at this point. I've pretty much covered everything I wanted to, but yeah, there are some of the uh, Shape Boys prints that I've done over the past, hmm, I don't know when I did the first one. It's been a while. It's been a while since I did the last one too. So that's why I've been wanting to do a new one. It'd be fun. If anything on this hair, you know, since we're kind of still in that block out stage, I would probably start getting some more volume, start cutting some shapes up, get some more variation. Uh, let's see. Anywhere from 200 to $500. Buckaroonies. Love the Banjo Kazooie. Yeah, he's one of my favorites. Or they are one of my my favorite prints in that that style and material. It's so their uh, SLS full color sandstone material on Shapeways. Like I said, there's a link down below if you guys want to check them out. I think it's just under 3D prints something. 3D prints. Also adorable, well, thanks to Tommy. Uh, let's see. Have you ever worked for a studio, done an internship, or just worked from home since the very beginning? Uh, yes, yes, and no. In that order. Let's see, what do you guys think? Keep messing with the hair? Or... Do some more stuff with the face. Can I talk about eyelashes? I absolutely can. Because I have a really, really good way to make eyelashes that we looked at during yesterday's stream. I'll do like a quick Spark Notes version, uh, but if you want like a super in-depth one, I don't want to kind of, I don't want to go through the whole thing again, just because we spent so long going through a lot of that stuff yesterday. Uh, but if you want to check that out, uh, there's a link down below to my YouTube channel with a ton of uh, content on there, but I would be happy to talk about eyelashes very quick. Uh, let's just, sure, we'll just like leave that on for now and zoom in here, look at our eyelashes. The eyelashes on this character are just a very simple piece of geometry. If we look at the low res here, it's just a tube of geometry, four-sided, and it is creased in such a way so that when it is smoothed and subdivided, creates these nice hard edges uh, on the on the corners there. The way you create something like this is by using some kind of curve brush. I have a custom curve brush. It's my cube tube brush. It is available on my gum road and it comes with three other curve brushes for only a dollar. So there's the curve brush there, the cube tube brush. There's some other ones in there as well. Check that out. Gum road slash polygon. Really simple to do. All you do is draw your lash in the shape that you want for your uh, curve brush, depending on what kind of brush that you're using. Oh, we have some stroke settings on that I forgot about. Some curve modifiers. Let me turn that off. And from here, I'll just kind of move this into where we want it, scale it up, accept it, And then from there, it's just a matter of manipulating the shape to exactly what you want it to be, thinning out the geometry. I mainly use my move brush to do this in combination with masking. And then once I'm happy,
happy with the shape. I'll probably play with the thickness a little bit, try to get it to be a little bit more clean until finally we get to something like this. Like I said, if you want to kind of see the step-by-step -step process of how I did it, uh, check it out on my YouTube channel. Thanks for the answer, boy. No problem. <laughs> Uh, there's something therapeutic about watching the hair being built up. Yeah, I agree. There's something therapeutic about just sculpting in general. Uh, looks like a real steel. Isn't real steel a, a movie with Wolverine in it? Huge jacked man. Or am I thinking of a different actor? What did I want to do with this like separation here? I think I wanted to just like cut it up. Or something. I don't know. I don't really um, like the straight line shape of the bangs. So instead, let's see. I'm trying to think. Like, make that like more visually interesting. Let's do something quick. Use that move accu curve function. <laughs> it's getting really messy really quick. That's okay. That's okay. We like messy because we can we can fix messy. We're pretty good at fixing messy actually. Oh, a terrible mask though. Let's uh, just dynamash up our hair so that it's two separate meshes. And then with that. So at this stage, you know, I'm, I'm not actually super happy with the larger shapes that we have going on here, but let's go ahead and like move on to what it would look like to start pushing into some like secondary forms a little bit more into that kind of like secondary stage. So we're not, you know, quite worrying about the the primary shapes here quite as much. One thing that I like to do when I'm sculpting hair, I really don't like this shape over here at all. So we can maybe fix that. For example, since this is still in the early stages, we'll look at an image of something that's finished. On this character, our Android 17 character, concept is by GopGap, the 2D concept. If you guys want to check out GopGap and some of their work, uh, or mine, it's just artstation slash polygon. I think, yes, for my work. There's a link down below. Um, but yeah, so start blocking out the shape. This was one piece of geometry at first. And then from there, what I did was I took that same brush that I actually used for the eyelashes, that cube tube piece of, ge uh, cube tube curve brush. And then what I did with that was use this to make separate individual segments of hair. So started off with one big blobby shape, got really happy with that shape, and then started making individual strands. There's also like a curved tube snap brush if you wanna play with um, more tubule shapes of geometry. It just kinda depends on the, uh, the shape and aesthetic that you're aiming for. But yes, there are a lot of variations to aim for there. Check it out. Lashes have been a struggle for you as well. Most of what you do is just low poly in moto. I've only been playing with ZBrush for about a year now. Awesome. I think I've used Moto like once on someone else's computer for like 10 minutes just to play around with it. Uh, this is, uh, this really is impressive work. Do you make your designs 3D printable? Yes, everything is pretty much like 3D print ready. Uh, just because my background is working in physical production, so pretty much everything I make uh, takes you know, seconds to get from, you know, sculpt to print ready. Uh, just because I kind of sculpt with that in mind. Uh, just to show an example, let me load in that Android 17 that we were just looking at, and I'll show you what kind of stuff that I look for while sculpting. I think this is the most recent one. Get this guy in here. How big is this? Not that big. Not that big. Under 30 million. But yeah, for something like this, so while I'm sculpting, what I'll tend to do 
uh, just to make sure that you know I'm leaning towards that production ready mode just because that's always in the back of my head uh, I tend to think about printability um, areas that might be too thin specifically for this character all these small strands of hair would absolutely you know not be possible for for most printers <laughs> uh, depending on the scale that you printed this at uh, I would probably just get rid of the thin streaks of hair and if that was something that really needed to be on the physical productive piece then there's probably some other kind of material that you yeah, you grab some pipe cleaners or something I don't know there's some other material that you could use to uh, better represent that uh, but I keep all that in the back of my head for stuff like you know clothing and stuff I'll typically fake thickness through like tapering different shapes and um, really just kind of taking the time to think about this stuff uh, I even think about this for like molding just because that's kind of my background for for work so if we look at something like this I think not just about the positive sculpt but I also have to think about the negative shape so if you're gonna mold something you have to avoid things that are gonna kind of lock up and uh, not be able to open so depending on how a shape is molded where a seam line is I try to think about you know tapering these kind of inner pieces so that there's not anything that's super thin that could easily snap off etc 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 I mean there's there's just a lot of, uh, of different things that I'm thinking about for that but to get this guy to like a 3d print ready state it I I think I could like press one two two buttons I think I could press two buttons to make this guy like 3d printable uh, it wouldn't be like the quality that I wanted it. I would spend more time to like <laughs> actually get that where I wanted it. But uh, it, it wouldn't be that much work. Uh, do I release them to people to download somehow? No, not typically. Um, a while ago I used to do some more of that, but it wasn't... It wasn't something I don't know maybe if there's like enough of a demand for something like that yes but uh, for me to give out kind of like the master file I'm fine with doing that uh, I have had issues with that in the past but <laughs> uh, I would be fine with that um, as long as you know there was enough of a need for that I haven't really been asked about that too often but yeah I don't know we'll see that might change in the future Every once in a while, people ask me for specific stuff. Uh, I don't know if Inky is still here. The Inky was hanging out a while ago in stream, but he was asking about my uh, Great Prince of the Forest sculpt. It's the last one there. Uh, he was asking about this character because he wanted to set it up in kind of a uh, forest scene and do some kind of render. Um, so, yeah, he's working on that. But, yeah. Sounds like a nifty little project. I'm into it. Uh, you can make it low poly so it's support free. Uh, making it low poly wouldn't make it support free. Uh, to make it support free to like avoid 3D printing supports altogether, what you would have to do is probably split this up into one, two, three, four, maybe like at least five or six in uh, maybe like seven or so individual parts and pieces just so you could totally avoid supports but you'd probably still have like a few here and there it just kind of depends on the angle and how you break out a character um for just like a 3d print of like i don't know like under four inches for something like this for like sla or something it's probably not worth doing a breakout of just because it'd be so small. Wouldn't really be worth it, and cleanup wouldn't be that hard. But yeah. The character is unapologetic about those leg warmers. Heck yeah, man. All about them. All about them. What were we doing? Messing with our hair. That's right. Just make, making a mess. Making a mess of all this hair. Uh, if you like The Flash, I'll enjoy your latest video. I've never seen The Flash. I, I, I take that back. I watched the pilot for the uh, television show. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not super into comic books or anything. But I do enjoy all the Marvel movies. 
Uh, having a lot of problems with creating subtools using BIT shortcut in ZBrush 2018. BIT, uh, that is not a shortcut to create subtools in any version of ZBrush because the B key pulls up your brush menu and then any character pressed after this, um, so specifically I, it will pull up insert multi mesh brushes. BIT is the IMM primitive brush. So maybe what you're trying to do, I'll try to suss out uh, what you should do if you're trying to create additional subtools. So I just have this piece of hair. What I'll do is I'll duplicate that hair. I'll grab that IMM primitive brush that you were just referencing. I'll draw in my new geometry. I will control shift click that new piece of geometry until it's the only piece that's selected. You can turn on solo mode here to make sure that that is the case. So here's the old one, here's the new duplicated piece. And then you'll go down into geometry, modify topology, and then delete hidden. And that will delete that hidden piece of geometry that you just duplicated on. And now you have two subtools. I don't know if that's what you meant, but contextually, that will be my, my guess for what you're going for. What, am, what are we doing here with this hair? Let's, let's go cute hairstyles, ponytail. Okay, hairstyles and ponytail are one word. I'll remember that. And by remember it, I mean, I'll forget it. Here. Ponytail over the shoulder. Like dish, or like dish. Let's do dish. Is that a uh, Kristen Stewart or whatever her name is? Hmm. I kind of like that shape. That's that's fun. Let's do something like that. Uh, yeah, I was actually offered a deal recently by my mini factory, but it just timing wise wasn't really a thing that I was super interested in. Uh, I used to upload stuff a while ago to a site that's pretty much dead now. It's called 3D Share. Uh, at least last time I checked on it, it was pretty dead. But yeah, right now at least I'm not, you know, super interested in my mini factory. Uh, just notice that you do courses. Do you do the very basics? Yeah, that's what um, this uh, how-to ZBrush course is. It's meant to get you up and running in ZBrush as quickly as possible. I'll also mention, uh, someone suggested that I, yesterday, that I mention in the course's information what level of uh, skill is required for these courses. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. I should do that. And then I went in here and I was like, I already do that. <laughs> so thank you for the suggestion. It is a good suggestion. But I do, uh, I do mention here uh, in the course's information of what level you should be uh, in your, and you know, that's up to you to figure out personally what you believe you think is, you know, an intermediate beginner level. Jimmy, Jimmy Levinsky. Cool. That's a cool last name. Welcome, and thank you for the follow. Let's go back to our pony, our ponytail. But anyway, that was uh, Gumroad slash Polygon. There's a link below. That How To ZBrush is the uh, absolute beginner's course that you were mentioning or looking for. Make sure I didn't miss anything here. In chat, fishtail, side braid. Is that what that's called, a fishtail? Like tight to wide, I'm guessing, maybe? I don't know. Trying to make a sphere subtool for an eyeball. Is there a different way to do that? Uh, yeah, another way that you could do an eyeball is just uh, append a sphere 3D and then you just move it into place. Wham, bam, slam. You should be good to go from there. That's how I inserted my eyeballs. I haven't even add, added subdivs to them. All right, so we'll take this Kristen Stewart lookalike and... Is that who I'm thinking of? Is that her name? No, that's not who I'm thinking of. That's the Twilight Girl. 
That's who that was down, or no, I thought I saw her. Nah, oh well, it doesn't matter. We got our ponytail. What we're gonna do is use a quick little see-through mode. Ooh, that's fun, that's pretty neat. And yeah, let's just grab this shape, run a really low Z remesh on it, and just kinda figure it out from there. Uh, not the standard, has a different texture on it for the type of braid. Oh, a fishtail braid um, instead of like the three piece. Gotcha. Thought you were talking about a fishtail. I thought that was like a specific type of ponytail or something. I guess it would be, but it, if it's just like a styled braid. All right, let's go back to our see through mode here. And I'll turn on polyframe so it's easier to see the shape. And we'll even cut off part of this here. We'll just like do this. Close holes, sure. See-through modes. And then I remember the see-through mode's annoying, so I turn it off. <laughs> that res and probably push that in a little bit so it's not poking into the head just kind of mainly looking at the silhouette shape that this creates right here we'll pull out that that tail of ponies right around there Kristen Bell thank you yes doesn't that look like Kristen Bell I think it does good call good call skills for you to envy <laughs> nice name that does look like Kristen Bell from, uh, if you guys have not checked out the show, The Good Place, I would encourage it. It's VV good. But you know, it is 2019, so it's literally impossible to uh, recommend anything to anyone because there's just so much freaking content out there for people to check out. I'll start from this side, and ooh, ooh, that's getting nasty real quick, isn't it? You read my mind, though, Skills. You knew. You knew exactly who I was thinking about. Looks like her. That's probably why. See-through mode is just amazing. Uh, yeah, it's very cool but it's kind of hard to work with. Normally what I do is use uh, the texture menu. There's this tool called Spotlight, so you can uh, import an image. I'll just grab one of the default images. Wow, wood chips, neat. And then you click on the Add to Spotlight button. And then what this was originally made for, sorry, the font, I can't see it with the wood chips in the way. This was originally made with the intention to project painting and uh, sculptural form onto uh, onto you know a 3d model much like you would do with um, oh, what's it uh, like like in I think in mudbox they're called like stencils I think they're called stencils in mudbox similar kind of idea here but what you can actually use this tool for as well is just a uh, reference image so I'll often have my reference image up there and I can just like toggle it on or off or overlay it over my character obviously this is wood chips so it's not a very good reference but <laughs> you get the idea you know you can overlay it all that good stuff but yeah i prefer using that it's a little bit a little bit better in my opinion especially for sculpting wood chips
just bought the How To ZBrush course. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. As I tell everybody that's working on my stuff, if you got any questions, shoot me an email, and I would be happy to help you if you need help with anything. Uh, stream and channel, best find this week. Well, thanks, man. That's very nice of you. Appreciate it. And some bits. The best find of the week is this cool channel. Woo. I'm a fan. Well, thank you, man. Got a, got some bits and a cool course for you. I think that puts you up on the leaderboard, if I'm not mistaken. 110. Hawk. Rocking the bits leaderboard. And mine, my leaderboard, oh, it's a, it's a V-good leaderboard to be on, on Twitch. All the cool kids are just clamoring, <laughs> clamoring to get on my, my bits leaderboard, for sure. Alright, this hair, looking a little flat for our pony, so let's look thicken. In thicken, in biggin. Let's just add some volume to it. Clay tubes brush. Sculpt out a few strokes. And uh, just kind of simplify this silhouette just because it's so, um, so drastic here. And then start to wrap this around the body a little bit better. Something like that, sure. And this feels a little bit too tight on that side, so we'll just kind of work on this shape for a little bit. Got some more bits. Is there another message with that one? I guess not. Um, just went up more. Oh, it adds it to it? I actually did not know that. But thank you, man. I appreciate that. The Bitmaster Hawk. That's funny. I, uh, guys, I am showing all of my Twitch knowledge right here live on stream, so I know just everything about Twitch. <laughs> um, Jimmy, what's going on, dude? See, so you worked on meatballs. Can you tell us how it was to work on? Uh, I didn't work on the film. I worked on... I think I only did one character for Cloudy. I believe I only did one. Uh, so I did a life-size version of, oh, what's his name, the monkey, I think it's Steve. And it was actually really fun to work on, but uh, I got to sculpt him with the party in a box, but it was a giant party in a box. Uh, party in a box, cloudy meatballs. So if you guys have ever seen, I can't remember what the main character's name is. Whoop, this thing. So it was a giant party in a box that Steve was on. That's an amazing freeze frame right there. But he's like slamming his hand down on the button. And the I think the box was like, it was bigger than him. I'm trying to remember his scale. I think Steve, I think the character was maybe like three feet tall. But it was mostly, mostly printed. Uh, from, um, I think, I think we did PLA for that one. I think most of it was PLA, and I think the body might have been milled out of, uh, just high density foam, but, uh, and the box definitely was milled out of foam, probably low density foam, some lower density foam, but yeah, party in a box, slams his hand down on the button. This is an invention that this character made that I can't remember his name of because it's been forever since I've seen this movie. Yeah, pretty fun. If you guys haven't seen Cloudy, it's a great movie. I think there's a second one? I don't think there's a third. Is the eye curve brush, the eye curve brush available in your brushes pack? I'm not sure, Francisco, which brush you're referring to for the eye curve brush. Are you talking about the cube tube brush? I don't think I have an eye curve brush. I have an insert. In my Folygon brushes, I have an insert eye brush, uh, which is different. Uh, that inserts an eyeball and, I think it's just an eyeball and a lens. Um, 
but the curve tube brush, I'm not sure if this is what you're talking about, let me know. That's in the, uh, the $1 pack underneath that. I uh, didn't know the name. Yeah, the uh, I think you're talking about the cube tube brush. Uh, let me know if that's right. But yeah, that's in the other the other pack, the dollar pack. So hey, save yourself some money. <laughs> save yourself four whole dollars. Uh, what's your real name and email? My name is Ben DeAngelis, and my email is. Are you ready? Folygon at gmail.com crazy i know yeah ben you can just call me ben doesn't matter doesn't matter to me but yeah shoot me an email if you are got some cool project ideas i'm always on the lookout for some new projectorinos guys i'm not gonna lie my bladder is about to explode so I will give <laughs> I will give some time for some last minute questions in here, and then I think we're probably just gonna noodle for a little bit longer on our hair, kind of just play around with some of the shapes, answer some few last minute cues, and then bounce. But uh, I am going to be streaming on the Pixelogic ZBrush channel tonight. Uh, I am fortunate enough to be an official Pixo ZBrush streamer, the creators of the software. And I'll be streaming tonight at 6 p.m. EST on their channel. There is a link somewhere down below to their channel, uh, but it's just Twitch TV, uh, twitch.tv slash pixologic if you guys want to come and hang out. 6 p.m. EST, so that's in two and a half hours, actually. So, two stream Tuesday. That's right. But yeah, I stream there every Tuesday at 6. Seagull, what's going on? Seagullian. Yeah, I always say, uh, or I used to say at the beginning of my streams and stuff, you know, I'm Folly Guy, but you, you can call me Ben. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Everybody just calls me. Everybody just calls me Folly. Because they know I like to make mistakes in my 3Ds. All right. Our noodle hair is, is it needs some work. But I had a lot of fun streaming today, guys, and getting to work on this face and, you know, pushing, pushing further and further on this until we just got to this beautiful result here. Uh, if you guys are joining us a little bit late, all the content for the stream uh, goes up on my YouTube channel, which there is a link for down below. And uh, yesterday's video where we started from scratch, we just started from a sphere and worked this up. If you guys are interested in checking that out, that's already uploaded on my YouTube channel. I will upload this one after we are done streaming here today. And again, I'll be on the Pixelogic ZBrush channel tonight in just a couple hours now. But yeah, definitely come and swing by. Man, that, that shape. That shape is a big old butt up there. Uh, make sure we don't have any last minute questions here. Catch you on the next stream as I have nothing else going on. Well, I will see you then. Uh, what? I don't know why Twitch always does this, but it makes some people's names like match the color of the background, and it's really annoying. Uh, Kana, Kana, thank you. I will see you then. The thumbnail right there was I making a stupid face or something. I uh, I want to become a YouTuber, guys, that uh, makes stupid face in their video thumbnails. Uh, is it okay if I show you what I made, or do I have to wait for Friday Critique at Ochima? Well, I'm jumping off right, like, right meow, right meow. But, uh, yeah, I would wait till Friday's Critique stream. Uh, by the way, for people that are new here, if you don't know, we, uh, do live, uh, critique streams every week. So if you guys want to get on that, all you have to do is email me your... Oh, you were talking about this face. That's the thumbnail. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. I, I would have to agree. Here, how about that? I like this a little bit more. <laughs> uh, so Friday, Friday at noon EST, we do live critiques. Email me at ztool, follow gmail.com, and uh, I will take a look during the stream. Uh, just try to um, type an exclamation mark critique if you want the instructions on uh, how you can send me that stuff, but just try to uh, be specific 
with what you're looking for for the critique. And oh my god, this light is right on my face. Beautiful, yes, I agree. <laughs> All right, you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will hopefully see some of you tonight on the Pixo ZBrush channel. All right, see you, gang.